When I turned 18, my brother and his friends took me camping in a spot called Devil's Hole in Barrington Tops, northwest of Sydney, Australia. It was just a typical camp spot, a clearing in the trees with enough room to set up a few tents and a fire pit in the middle. After a day of four-wheel driving in the roads around the campsite, we went hunting for firewood, gathered a sizable pile, including an entire fallen gum tree, about 30 meters long. Night fell, the fire was roaring, and beer was being consumed in great quantity. As usual people were going off into the trees frequently for a pee, making room for more beer. At one point I headed into the bush, to a spot I'd claimed as my own personal toilet. My brother followed with a torch, since it was pitch black and it's not a bad idea to stick together in the Australian bush. We walked along a small path, about 50 meters from the campsite. After emptying our bladders, we turned around and back onto the same path. We went about 5 meters, when we noticed something standing on the path. A kangaroo, probably 1.5 meters tall standing there looking at us. We didn't hear it approach, which was strange since it was fairly dense bush, and there were sticks and leaves all over the ground. The kangaroo bounded off into the darkness, revealing something even more unusual. Behind it, on the formerly empty path, was three sticks, standing up in a triangle shape, tied together at the top. We went for a closer look, and it was the way back to the campsite anyway. Sitting on top of the three sticks, was a small human-shaped figure, made out of twigs, similar to this. Underneath the triangle was a piece of tree bark, covered in different colored paints. At this point we were pretty confused, but being a pair of drunk idiots, we picked all the stuff up, headed back to the campsite, and threw it in the fire. We didn't see any other signs of kangaroos, or any wildlife really, over the rest of the time there, another day and night, just that one lone kangaroo that appeared out of thin air. After a few years I did some research, and it's possible we encountered a Kurt Aitcha, an aboriginal ritual executioner sometimes compared to a skinwalker. Last summer I road tripped across the US solo for two months. I left Crater Lake heading to California later than I'd planned, and was planning to camp wherever. My gas light had been on for 30 miles and there hadn't been any services so I was getting a little nervous. Saw a sign for a campground and I figured I could talk to whoever was camping there to find out how far away gas was and maybe sleep there for the night. It was an old logging site, so the road there was super rough and very far from the main road. I pulled in and there was a mid-slash-late 20s couple at the very first site. I said hello and asked if they knew the area. I got a sense of genuine friendliness from them and they said the nearest gas station was only two miles away, but that it had closed for the night. The site next to them was open and they suggested I take it. I started setting up my tent and was using a rock to get my stakes in the ground when the guy showed up with his hand axe and offered to help. Creepy, but helpful. I asked if he drank and offered him a beer as a neighborly gesture. His wife slash girlfriend came over and asked if I had any pills. Uh, just some ibuprofen, but why don't you have some we'd have picked up in Washington? They reminded me to pay for my site at the self-serve box. More than once. Red flag so I said I didn't have cash. They said I could just write my credit card information down and put it in the box. 1000 red flags. The woman wanted to introduce me to the neighbors so she took me to an RV that looked like it had been parked there for multiple months, cardboard over wheels, dirty, and inside were a very drunk man somewhere over 60. A woman who insisted on feeding me the tacos she was cooking, and a dog looking at me like maybe I had food in my pockets. The drunk man started a very long story that wound up being a joke with the punchline being Jeffrey Dahmer slash cannibalism based at the moment the older woman handed me a taco. I stated I had to check on something, 
got out of the trailer, tossed the taco to the dog following me, and proceeded to crack open a beer to put together a plan. These people were messed up, but I didn't feel like I was in immediate danger. I had some time. I decided to shoot the breeze with the guy from the first couple and the way he described it. They'd been camping for two weeks because money ran out. Pretty soon I heard the old woman yelling at the man and the that's it. I've had it. Vain. I'd stated that I was thinking about heading over to that gas station to see if it actually was closed just so I could get a few more miles done for the day. Old lady comes over to where dude and I are standing and says he's really done it this time. Next ride into town that comes my way I'm gonna take it I sip my beer. Younger woman says to me I can ride with you to the gas station. Just so you find it I take a much larger sip of my beer. I'm starting to get really uncomfortable. I make up some excuse to go back to my site and rip up my tarp, tent, and fly all together, shove it in the back of my car, and get out of there. Made it to the gas station which was indeed closed, but had passed a charming bee and be less than a mile before. I explained to the desk clerk that I had a very weird encounter at a campsite and would be sleeping in my car in their lot that night. She wanted to sell me a room far outside my budget and wound up offering the use of their bathrooms and morning coffee. Filled up my tank in the morning and bid farewell to Prospect, Oregon. I was camping with two college friends way the hell out in the mountains of Trinity County in far northern California. It wasn't an established campsite, just a nice spot many miles down a dirt road off the main highway, Route 299, which is largely isolated to begin with. There might not have been another soul for miles. This is a very rural and rugged area, and it's part of a region where a lot of weed is cultivated illegally, which can sometimes make it dangerous. We got to this spot late in the day, a nice little clearing along a stream, and set up camp. As we sat around the fire after dark, shooting the stuff like usual, a large animal suddenly exploded out of the brush and seemed to stop right outside our fire circle, but then we didn't hear it leave. Not even a twig cracking. It was gone though, we searched around with our lights. It seemed unusual to all of us that the animal would arrive so loudly. We listened to it approach for several oh seconds, but then make no discernible noise retreating. My one friend, who was somewhat of a local, said he thought it was a puma for that reason. A tad unnerving, but okay. We laughed it off, drank beer, and eventually crashed out, with one friend and I in a two-person tent and the other, the local, who grew up in the backwoods, in a tiny single-person tent next to us. We fell fast asleep for at least a few hours. Out of nowhere, in the middle of the night, I woke up. There were footsteps right outside the tents. I don't know why, but I felt a very strong intuition not to call out to my friend in the other tent to check if it was him. Even though I'm going out to take a piss would be the obvious explanation, I'd gone camping with these guys countless times. And then, the person walking called out, and I almost shat myself. It wasn't my friend, it was just some random guy. He circled our tents for the next five minutes, calling, hello, hello. He said it over and over in a disconcertingly calm and measured voice. Remember, this was the middle of the night way out in the middle of nowhere. I had this crazy gut feeling to stay absolutely silent and wait for an attack, which I did, knife in hand. My friend in my tent slept through it all. The weird guy left with no sound of a vehicle or anything, and somehow dawn arrived. The next day, the first thing I did was ask my buddy in tent number two whether he heard that dude walking around. He did, and he had the same instinct as me. My other friend, who had been sleeping next to me, was obviously confused. He asked, WTF, why didn't you wake me up? It's like, 
We'll help the guy out or kick his ass. I couldn't explain it, but the other friend backed me up right away. He said it was super creepy, and the way the guy was moving and speaking had a really weird vibe. This friend wasn't the type to get scared or the type who you'd expect not to confront someone in that situation. So my tent mate just let it be and we all basked for a few minutes in the WTF-ness of the event. One of the little mysteries of my life that I always look back on is what that guy wanted and what would have happened if we'd responded and or burst out of our tents. It's not easy to burst out of a zipped up tent, and who knows, maybe in this case that little hang up saved our asses. I went backpacking into the wilderness alone this summer. Things were uneventful and I intentionally went to a place where people don't tend to go. But just before dark, I heard the voices of two men muttering. No matter what I did, I couldn't see them. But I was trying to be discreet myself, so that they didn't see me, a young girl, just chilling in the wilderness completely by myself. Anyway I never tracked down those voices, and they continued until just after nightfall. I armed myself with my weapons, made my dinner, had a fire, and went to bed. I didn't hear anything again until about 4 am. At that time, I began to hear the sound of what I can only describe as a baseball bat or a thick branch being hit up against a tree trunk. It happened over and over again in a distinct pattern, until the sun came up. It came from the same exact spot as where I heard those voices. But again, I never saw anything. The next day I'm telling my coworker about it. He is an avid outdoorsman who writes published work about backpacking in this region. He knows everything about this place. He is a logical, serious man, not prone to fanciful ideas at all. He asked if anything happened, and I told him that. I finished with, it must have been a deer rubbing its antlers on the trees, right? He looked me dead in the eyes and told me it sounds like what I heard was Bigfoot tree knocking. He then told me that for decades, he's been told about area sightings and encounters with a Bigfoot type of creature. Here is one account this happened about a half a mile away from where I was. Great. So it was either two creepy men messing with me, or the New York Bigfoot. Either way, creepy and uncool. Nine years ago I was camping in northern British Columbia with a group of friends. It was around 10 pm and we were in the middle of nowhere, roughly 50 kilometers from any town slash store etc so it was super dark out. We were sitting around our fire and just listening to tunes and drinking beers etc at one point we see a light up on the mountain across the lake from us. This was a decent sized lake, I'd say roughly 5 kilometers across, surrounded by mountains. So as we notice the light, assuming that it's other campers that we could visit with, we flashed our flashlight at them attempting to get their attention. First we flashed our light twice, and they flashed back at us twice. Then three times. We were brainstorming going for a hike to go meet them when the light seemed to increase in intensity, then proceed to fly from one side of the massive mountain to a mountain on the other side of the lake. It then sat there and flashed at us a few times, but we turned off our light and at this point were shitting bricks. I remember just going into my tent and putting my sleeping bag over my head out of fear. I fell asleep and woke up and everything was fine, but for some reason there was roughly half a dozen dead really big toads outside my tent. What the F? Still wonder to this day what the heck happened. No dead bodies so far? Growing up in one of the biggest cities in the US didn't give me many opportunities for outdoor recreation. And once we moved to the Pacific Northwest I didn't have much interest. I quickly learned to love hiking and canoeing, but camping didn't interest me at all. Bugs and bears and boredom. 
The first and last time my significant other convinced me to try camping only lasted a few hours. We set up the tent, I got wrapped up in reading and he went for a hike. He has some ongoing digestive issues and a couple of miles away felt nature's call. He walked off the trail into the trees to take care of business. He came thrashing back into the campsite red-faced and in a little bit of shock. The first words out of his mouth were is there DNA in poop? I just pooped on a crime scene. To clarify, he pooped on a shallow grave. Or near a shallow grave. Stand By Me was a decent movie, but I wasn't tromping back to see for myself. This was just before everyone took phones everywhere, so we drove back to the nearest town to call authorities. The police asked us to clear out and I packed up while he went to show the detectives where. We found out later that it was a drug deal gone sour and two others killed a lady and buried her in the woods. I still love outdoor activities but I haven't gone camping again. I don't know if I camp enough to answer this, or if it's the strange that you're looking for. But one year my friend invited me to stay up in the woods at this old campsite he went to every year with his family. It was fun. We fished and went swimming and everything. And one night we had this little bonfire and made s'mores. Camping stuff. But then, at two in the morning, someone whistled the Hunger Games call. Me, being an avid whistler, one of my few skills, whistled the return call. They did it again. I did it again. The campsite had maybe 40 people in it and everyone was intense except me and my friend and the whistler. So this went on for about five minutes and the whistles devolved into random notes and counter melodies until I got fed up and decided to find them. So I stood up and walked into the forest. Barefoot. No flashlight. A total fool. Now. I didn't want to call out to them, because that would be too easy, so instead I slunk through the forest quietly, trying to hone in on their whistle. It took about 20 minutes before my friend realized we were going too far away from camp and should head back, but I had to freaking find them. A couple of minutes later we reached a little clearing. There was a cliff that ran down into the lake and a couple of trees that had fallen over, and there were three kids just sitting out looking to the lake. I called to them, saying that I'd been looking for them and how fun the whistling was, and who they were, but they didn't respond. They just sat there and looked at the lake. It was positively eerie, and they didn't even seem to hear me. I didn't get any closer to them than a couple of feet, I didn't want to spook them and have them demon throw me over the cliff or something. As soon as we got back to our campsite there was no more whistling. Very creepy. In the morning I asked people if they had heard us and they said no, so I guess everyone is just a super heavy sleeper or something. Probably going back though. I'm from a Iroquois reservation in Ontario, Canada. It's almost like you can ask anyone from around here if they've experienced any kind of paranormal stuff and they usually have a story. My culture and heritage is filled with stories of otherworldly beings and creatures, and stories of how things came to be before Europeans inhabited the territory. I'm naturally skeptical about a lot of what people say they see in the bush here, as I've hunted the territory my entire life. I've come across a lot of things in the bush some might consider paranormal, various animal cries and howls, owls flying at low light, decomposing animals in water, etc. This particular time I wasn't hunting though. My family homestead is situated almost a half km into the bush. It was early summer just as the fireflies were coming out. A belief of the Iroquois is that fireflies are a sign that Indian medicine is at its most powerful, this time of year. Good and bad. So I get home from work a little after midnight. I turn off the car and get out to start walking up the path to the house. Normal routine. This night though, 
I stop to look at the fireflies up on the hill behind my home. It looks amazing. So my porch wraps around the house, and I walk to the back of the house and start walking slowly up the hill. All of a sudden I think I hear some beating sound like music and I look back to see if my car radio was still on. From a distance I could see the car was off and no sound was coming from that direction. So I walk up to the top of the hill and that's when the sound gets louder. I start to hear it clearly. From the top of the hill, looking down onto the other side into the bush line I no longer see any fireflies. All I hear is the faint sound of a water drum beating and a low raspy voice signing an old Indian song. I just turned around and went inside and tried to convince myself I wasn't crazy. It was the only spiritual experience I have ever had in my life and I go out back to that spot every summer and lay down tobacco and cedar for my visitor. Two years ago my friend and I were spending the night in a yurt we had rented up near the Friendship Gardens on the Canadian slash North Dakota border. We were thrilled with how amazing the yurt was. It was surprisingly warm for being a glorified tent in mid-March. And we could watch the stars from a skylight in the roof. Needless to say, we slept pretty soundly until about 4 AM. All of the sudden I woke to the sound of something scratching on vinyl. I thought a squirrel had gotten in and was scurrying around on the vinyl mattress. I sprang out of bed to check but couldn't find anything. I thought it must be outside so I tried to back to sleep, but the scratching was incessant and it was moving, like something was trying to get in. Eventually I crossed the yurt and slept next to my friend. But then she woke up, saying she could hear scratching on that side of the tent. By that point we were pretty freaked out because the scratching was now following us. We immediately thought it was a person trying to get in because an animal probably wouldn't track our voice. Not that far in the woods away from normal human contact. We sat in the middle of the yurt for the rest of the night holding a broom as defense waiting for someone to break in, and the ranger station didn't open until 7. So we had no one to call for reinforcements. Finally around 6 I got up the courage to look out the blinds to see if it was an animal or a person because it had been about 2 hours and all they did was scratch. Immediately I felt like an idiot. It had snowed overnight and the heat from inside the yurt was causing the snow to melt. What we had heard was the snow sliding off the roof of the tent. Pretty terrifying. My wife and I were camping near Carlsbad Caverns at the Guadalupe State Park. Around 2 in the morning we hear footsteps on the gravel outside our tent. Someone walked up and stood right outside the door of the tent and was breathing heavily. My wife and I stared at each other silently hoping this psycho didn't open the tent and attack us. We were unarmed and had no idea what to do. The person stood outside sometimes pacing back and forth, until 5 in the morning. It was the longest three hours of my life. We heard another camper in the site next to us get up and leave their tent and that is when the creepy person finally left. I am petty sure they were contemplating murdering us. I was cross-country skiing in Utah. About three days in and it's starting snowing, a lot, no, much more than that. We got lost, and spent hours going in the wrong direction. Then we came across a fairly big cabin. Small ironwood fire stove and bunk beds three high all around. In the morning we got our bearings. Cabin was in the middle of nowhere, no trails in or out. There were however names on carved on many trees all written by the same person. All the names were crossed out. We were on a road trip from British Columbia to San Diego and we came upon a campsite just outside of Crescent City, California. We drove through, one side of the campground was relatively empty, 
I noticed a few scattered tents but nobody close to the location we ended up picking. We had tons of space. We wanted an early night so I started a fire while my girlfriend started cooking. We ate, had a few beers, and climbed up to our rooftop tent, Tepwi, with our dog by 9 pm or so. I had a rough time sleeping and woke up a few times but finally fell into a decent sleep. In the pitch dark with all of our tent windows and canvases closed I was awoken at 1 am by someone whistling outside of our tent the tune of when the saints come marching in. After a few minutes of this repetitive whistling I nudged my girlfriend who awoke and was obviously freaked out as well. The whistling then turned to chanting things like when you sleep here you disrespect me, and when you disrespect me you disrespect the US Marines. The person would then start spelling out words like FLEE. The verbiage and tone kept getting more aggressive so we decided we had to make a move. I slowly unzipped the tent while our guard dog was snoring and got my head out of the tent. I took a few seconds to let my eyes adjust and figure out where the person was. I felt more confident once I could somewhat see and hear so I climbed down and the girlfriend passed me the dog and she climbed down too. We flipped the tent up without securing it and we jumped into a truck, while the person was still whistling, to a motel in Crescent City. The next morning we drove back to get the few belongings that weren't in the truck and a family who had been camping a few sites over said it went on for another three hours and it was the scariest thing their family had ever experienced. Probably 16 at the time, and one of my buddies had asked me up to his bonfire party. Everyone where I'm from has great big properties with tons of space and this was a semi-usual occurrence during the summers. Grab all your friends, drive some trucks and tents way up in the middle of nowhere on someone's property, build a grand old fire, have some drinks. That night I was getting particularly tipsy and as I'm going in and out of my drunkenness the last thing I remember is sitting on a log and feeling the whole world begin to shake around me. Looking around, trucks shaking, trees shaking, people suddenly standing up and looking around in bewilderment. Can hear a tree fall in the distance. I'm freaking out inside but too drunk to tell what's going on. It stops and everything fades to black. I wake up and I'm face down half in ash half in dirt, wondering what the hell happened. I sit up and not more than 5 feet away from me a full grown bull moose is standing there, just staring down at me. For anyone who's never seen a moose in real life, they are massive. They stand some 10 feet tall and I would guess weigh 1000 pounds for the really big ones. They also can be aggressive if threatened and there is no way you are winning that battle. So I'm sitting there speechless, desperately wanting to yell to my friends but can't for fear of spooking it. This goes on for what seemed like hours but was probably more like 5 minutes, at which point it walks over to the truck, looks inside, sticks its head into an empty cooler, looks like it might very grab something but I couldn't tell, and just walks off back into the brush. Come to find out that the shaking and trees falling was an earthquake, and the moose was very real, and I'll never drink Jack Daniels again after falling asleep half in a fire. This happened to my uncle in the 80s, he's been a serial camper all his life, he told me this story once when I went camping with him recently, we're from Queensland in Australia. He was up in northern Queensland camping on one of the many beautiful sunny and pristine beaches you get up there about 20 meters from the breaking shore. He recollects waking up to a shuffling noise around 2 am and thinking nothing of it. There's many random animals like wallabies that hop around on the beach at night up there. He exited his tent and walked for a bit to pee and continued to hear the random shuffling noises in the sand and thought nothing of it. Went back to his tent and went to sleep. In the morning he wakes up and exits his tent and starting about 15 meters from the tent is a thick, fresh trail of blood leading straight down and disappearing into the water's edge. He walked over to have a look at the origin and saw massive claw prints far bigger than his foot and a belly mark leading through the blood trail. 
Turns out a gigantic saltwater crocodile had come up in the night and killed something and dragged it back into the ocean. This plus drop bears are why nobody should ever come here. I was 13 at my grandfather's hunting camp. My uncle had just bought a new hunting camera and wanted to test it out so he set it up out in the woods. I got the brilliant idea to go up in the woods with my two other cousins and moon it, so when he checked the card, instead of wildlife, he would have seen some lovely butt cheeks. Hilarious to a 13 year old's mind, and after some convincing my other two cousins were in, but we had to go under the cover of darkness. So we set our alarms for 3 AM, and pass out. By 315 we all sneak outside, throw on our head lamps and start walking. We know the camera is about a mile away. The trail goes over two pretty big hills, and the camera is in a valley on the far side of the second hill. We start walking as normal, and everything is good. The excitement starts building, and we're pretty giddy that we are pulling this glorious prank. After a few minutes of brisk walking we get to the top of the second hill. My older cousin who knows the area more than me stops as he gets to the top. As I make my way to the top, I see why. Off in the distance about 400 yards is a spotlight. Its bluish slash white color illuminates nearly half of the hill it's point at. This thing was crazy bright. By this time all three of us were looking at the light, and my older cousin tells us to turn off our headlamps. We stand there in silence. Me, being the 13 year old pussy I was, started to get freaked out. Aliens is the first thing that comes to my mind, and I tell my oldest cousin we have to leave. I turn on my headlamp and turn around about to head back to the campsite. As soon as I turn my light back on, the super bright blue light starts to slowly turn and stops right on us. No bobbing, or movement from the light besides, besides just a slow, consistent pan right over towards our direction. Just inching, as slowly as possible. At the point I nope out, with my cousins right behind. I get inside, and go straight to bed, pretty much freaking out. Flash forward to next morning, all three of us go back to the same spot and then proceeded to go to where we thought the light would have been and there was nothing there. No boot marks, no light, no nothing. To this day, still have no idea. This was just a couple of weeks ago. Was camping with my sister in a state park. For privacy we had picked a spot away from the road and near a bit of a drop in the terrain that was separated from our site by a couple of downed trees. I was having problems getting to sleep because it was cold and I had a headache. This was later in the season than we normally would camp and my sleeping bag was only rated to 40 degrees. It was in the mid 30s. It was about 3 AM and as I was trying to get warm and find a position that wouldn't aggravate my headache I heard something moving outside. There had been a bit of wind earlier in the evening and things had been dropping from the trees. However the wind was dead quiet now. I could hear every leaf crunch so I knew there was something out there. My mind was racing and my body was shaking. From cold and from fear. Was it a squirrel? No. They weren't nocturnal. Was it a bear? I didn't hear any breathing. Then I heard the scratching. I was trying to be very still because whatever it was, it was very close. I didn't want to alert it to my presence. It wasn't easy since I was shaking so hard. More leaf crunches and more scratching. Then I heard the lid being pried off of the tub we had outside. I knew then it was a raccoon. Now confident it wasn't a bear, I banged on the side of the tent several times to scare it off. My sister bolted awake as I heard the tub lid tumble and more leaf crunches as it took off. After I explained to my sister what had slash was happening I gathered the courage to venture out to check the damage. I replaced the tub lid and found an empty hot dog bun wrapper, 
missing the two buns. There were also small holes in the garbage bag we had hanging up in a tree but no spillage since it was double bagged. As I was surveying the area for any other damage, I could hear leaves rustling down below. I shined my flashlight down the hill to see if I could see the bandit. That's when I saw a man in a black beanie, walking down the hill in the pitch black with no flashlight about 35 feet from me. I was too scared to do anything but return to the tent and try to slow my racing heart. Dukes Creek Falls area in the North Georgia mountains. We had hiked out to an area that basically was on a ridge line. We were 20 feet from a cliff for the most part with a little outcropping of rocks and dirt. I was already hung over and just feeling bad the whole day. I slept in my tent for the late afternoon. Sorry forgot to say but I was with three other people. Anyways I woke up around 9 p.m. after sleeping most of the evening and being a hungover Debbie Downer. We were all getting stoned by the fire when we hear a noise of breaking branches. More and more getting louder then dot silence. We ignored it but not soon after we spotted an older man come out of the thick woods. Walking as if it was a trail he knew well. This trail wasn't even a trail more like straight up woods. Anyways I say, holy s dude you scared us all, you okay? I'm fine thanks. He continued on with an alarming fast jog south of us. We were all like WTF. We decided to follow about 10 minutes after. Nothing. Pitch black woods. No campsites for a long while. We couldn't explain why this old dude was out this far in the woods. This was thick woods literally out in the middle of nowhere. Edit. This was dense woods. Teresa dirt road that leads out to the area in which we hiked east of about 3 to 4 miles. We didn't park on the dirt road only in the parking lot that was still a good mile away. The old dude had no flashlights with him and simply walked through our camp and after the conversation jogged away quickly. We walked a good 20 minutes into the woods behind us and heard nothing. I turned my flashlight off several times to make a point that it was literally pitch black. This isn't my story this is my dad's story. My dad and my grandparents were camping out by Lake Tahoe, and all day my grandpa said that they felt like they were being watched. My grandpa described a general feeling of just something not feeling right. That night they had built a big fire and had gotten in their tents and they began to hear all the strange noises. They described it as a wolf howling, but as if it were ten times deeper. My grandpa decided it would be best to keep the fire lit all night. My grandpa stayed up all night out of protection of his family and out of fear. Around 3. 45 he says he opened the tent flap and looked outside to see what he says is the most terrifying thing he's ever seen. A large black humanoid figure walking circles around the fire. The thing had no distinguishable features except for its giant pair of yellow eyes. Just then my grandpa said an awful scent filled the air, like something had been rotting for over eight years. The last thing my grandpa saw before he went back into the tent was the figure returning to the woods and he saw three other figures exactly like the one he saw waiting for the figure. Grandpa loaded his gun and he says nothing else happened and they left the next day. This story still gives me nightmares today. Where I live there are huge swaths of forested land that is miles and miles from any sort of civilization. Being a good old country boy I spent a lot of time camping along the DNR roads. One year, we were camped out on the side of a little mountain and spent the night drinking and whatnot. The next morning nobody wanted to cook so we decided to drive into a town 20 miles away for breakfast. As we were exiting the forest we came upon a police blockade. The sheriffs had their rifles pointed at us, and told us to park the vehicle and walk towards them with our hands in the air. 
We followed instructions and they told us that a forest ranger had been shot the previous night. I later found out that she was shot about 300 feet below our campsite. We probably heard the gun, but in that part it wasn't unusual for people to be shooting in that area. We were told that we couldn't go back for our camp gear, as the killer was still on the loose. Instead, we drove to a nearby casino and got back to the revelry. A few hours later, the gas station next to the casino is packed with sheriffs, PD, FBI, every Leo within 50 miles must have been there. As it turns out, the killer was spotted at the gas station and an officer who happened to be there recognized him. When the Leo told him to get on the ground the killer reached for his gun, at which point the Leo shot and killed him. Was so strange that we were within a few hundred feet of where he killed someone, and hours later a few hundred feet from where he was ultimately killed. We drove back to our campsite that night a little sombered, then proceeded to get shit-faced. I went on a 16-mile hike in Arizona and climbed up a pretty easy hill, I think it was 8,000 to the top and not that much gain to get there. Rookie move I didn't have enough water for the dry altitude and my meals were freeze-dried. I hiked to the top and got there as the sun was going down. I checked my water and split some between my dog and I then set up a quick camp near a log with just a small hobo fire and a place to get some sleep so I could hike back in the morning. It was a day hike gone bad, because I didn't want to be hungry, thirsty and wandering around in the dark because it was completely new to me, I had never been there before. About 10 PM when it's pitch black I hear something rustling around and making low noises getting closer making more grunts and shuffling noises and scaring me. I had a more knife on me but, I was still pretty scared, that's not much protection I'm not Daniel Boone and now terrified thinking it was a Bigfoot or a bear or something I started freaking a little bit, mountain lions don't make noise like that. My dog was staring intently in its direction with his ears up as it got closer and closer, louder and louder. As soon as it got about 10 to 15 away, I couldn't see because there wasn't a moon, my dog finally did his damn job and got up and started barking like crazy. And then the beast let out a huge squeal and ran away, it was just a stupid javelina that I was terrified of and stole my man card for a little bit. This was years and years ago when I was just getting back into hiking and now I always have enough water and plan my hikes accordingly. My vicious dog is now 13 and no more hikes but, he does still guard against the vacuum. My family owns acreage in the middle of nowhere so we've created a family camp of sorts. I was sitting around the fire, finishing my beer and the rest of the family was asleep. It was about 1 to 2 am. The only light was from the stars and the fire and the only sound was the crackling of said fire. Suddenly, I get that feeling that I'm being watched. There's woods surrounding the camp area and they're obviously pitch black. This unsettling feeling won't leave me so I stand up to go to the cabin. As I turn, I see a huge dog standing less than a foot from where I was sitting, just staring at me. I never heard him approach, breathing. Nothing. He looked like one of those hunting dogs black with gray spots on the back. My heart jumped and I about shat myself but he just sniffed the air then returned to the woods. I've never seen him since nor has any of my family members. Scared the crap out of me. Like 8 years ago my girlfriend and I got some crazy urge to go camping at the Palisades in northern Illinois. We both loved the outdoors and had camped many many times before, and this was by far the creepiest thing ever. Started like a normal night, hiked out on a trail for like a half hour, not far but just far enough to be secluded got camp set up, made a fire. As we cooked slash ate dinner we both kind of got this uneasy feeling about staying out and we talked about tearing down the tent and leaving. Something was just making us feel weird. 
It was dark at this point and we had decided to stay. And almost jokingly she said, Fine. We'll stay out here in the creep woods and hope there aren't creepy people and out of the corner of my eye. Just within the ring of light from the fire, I saw something move. I jumped up from my seat. It was a man. He froze, almost like he was trying to blend in, then slowly let out a sigh, and backed out of the ring of light, and into the forest. Needless to say, we slept in the locked car. Hungover as f the morning after my buddy's bachelor party camping trip, I felt the night before's beer and pork rumbling. I took off down the path with the shovel and my mountain money. An incredible view paid out before me, the coast of Big Sur, the mountains, and blue sky above. I found a clearing free from view of the campsite. The ground was covered with gopher mounds and was quite soft. I dug a small one deep hole and took my pants down to my ankles. Oh man the rumbling was getting more frequent and louder. I sunk into a deep squat over the hole, keeping my balance by supporting myself on the shovel handle. A rustling noise behind me gave notice. I turn and see a rattlesnake 18 from my a hole. My blood ran cold. This thing had a body the size of a coke can. I was three hours from a hospital. My body sucked up my impending release, and I spun rapidly, trying to bring my pants up and clutch the shovel in striking position at the same time. We held eye contact as I slowly backed away. I'm too hungover for this. The snake pops down into one of the holes I assumed were gopher holes. I hope to god those weren't all rattlesnake holes but that's all I can imagine. I'm not about to play a deadly game of whack-a-mole with a field full of rattlesnakes. I took off at a 45 degree angle to the last known position of the snake, at the time that seemed strategic. Pale white and out of breath I made it back to camp. I had to tell my friends I almost just crap on a rattlesnake. I still had to go. When Jay finally gathered enough courage to try again I chose a spot 15 from camp. Solo backpacking trip in North Georgia. Rolled into camp at around 7 at night. Still a decent amount of light. Noticed a herd of deer in camp scared them off thought nothing of it. Made dinner got stoned and made my usual pot of tea and started winding down for bed. I hear some commotion in the woods. Sounds like an animal moving around. So I get up with my flashlight and start looking around. Walk about 100 feet from the tent and hear it again out in the woods. I pick up a stick and go to throw it in the general direction of the noise, thinking it is a deer and it'll get up and run. As soon as the stick left my hand the deer ran. Only it wasn't the deer in the woods it was the deer that was bedded down two feet away from where I was standing. I've never been so startled in my life. Took me about two hours to calm down and fall asleep after that. My husband and I, when we first got together, Went camping in a secluded campground I'd been to with my family multiple times before. We stayed two nights and left July 4th. The first night was fine, and we tied our food up into a tree, as we were in bear and wolf country. The next day, we went muscle hunting and came back, fooled around and then took a nap. I woke up to go to the next campground to use the public restroom and found boot prints around our tent that didn't exist before, and bicycle tracks in the dirt, with an imprint of the handlebar which had leaned against my very dirty car. Then, that night, we were woken up to a pack of wolves hunting by our tent, who killed a small animal by our heads. We figured out that there were ten of them, one at each trailhead. We brought a .22 pistol with us just in case and he shot through the tent to scare them off. They didn't come back but we didn't sleep much that night. I've been camping all my life and I've never been so spooked on a trip.
once rented a lakeside cabin up north. We were so far from civilization, there was absolutely no light pollution at all. It's great for looking at the stars at night, but when it's cloudy, not so much. Anyway, one night I went out on the back deck of the cabin to see what I could see. It was overcast, so the world was basically black in all directions except for the lights from the window behind me. I walked up to the railing and just looked out into the darkness. I could hear the lake, but I couldn't see anything. I just stood there basking in the creepiness of it. I've never been afraid of the dark, but that was so pitch black it was almost unnatural. After a few minutes I heard something swimming in the lake. I don't know what it was. A moose? A bear? I have no idea. I just know it was friggin' massive. I could tell by how deep the breathing sounds were. Then it stopped right in front of where I was standing and sniffed a few times. I'm pretty sure he could smell me, whatever it was. I ran back into the house like a scared little boy. Once, I woke up to the sounds of something moving against the side of the tent, enough to shake it. From the little bit of light filtering through the side of the tent, it looked like there was a small hunched person standing outside. After the first flash of murderous disfigured redneck hobo cannibal thoughts, I went to the more reasonable crap, bear. Well I figured I was in black bear territory, so it's probably just curious and I can scare it off with some loud noises. No sweat. I started yelling and clapping and hooting, expecting to see its shadow scamper off into the woods as they usually do. Instead, what I got was the horror of five more similar silhouettes joining the first and a long unearthly hissing sound. Do bears hiss? I don't think bears hiss. WTF. So now my brain has failed back over to evil murder gremlins, and I watch as the shadows of these figures shuffle around, seemingly feet from my tent, and listen to the otherworldly hissing and chattering passing between them. Meanwhile I've silently pulled my camping knife from my pack and I'm gripping it close to my chest, white knuckled, because I'm not going out like a bitch this night. After approximately 20 years, or maybe it was 5 minutes, it was hard to tell at the time. I could hear whatever was out there starting to walk away. I gave it another year, give or take, for them to get well away then slowly unzipped my tent just enough to peer out with my flashlight beside my face, hoping to maybe see some consoling paw prints. What I got instead was a long hiss that I instinctively, foolishly perhaps, pivoted the flashlight towards and saw a solitary figure, maybe 3.5 feet tall and pitch black to the point that it was like the flashlight refused to touch it. Nothing but eyes gleaming back at me, then teeth and that infernal hiss again. Then a flick of motion behind it, and a shock of white. Two thick stripes of white on a big goddamn fluffy tail. I'd just been terrorized by a family of carnival-sized goddamn skunks, I assume a mother and young, with a particularly fondness for walking upright. F those skunks. While settling in at Sandy Balls as part of my Duke of Edinburgh award, we started hearing noises of bikers, cyclists, not Hell's Angels, coming down the path. Now, we were at the bottom of the campsite. This place is a luxury site, and they didn't really want a bunch of grubby 16-year-olds, so we were camping right at the bottom of a hill. It was a dead end. It led to nothing but cow pastures. We'd broken the Duke of Edinburgh rules earlier and headed up to the main facility to enjoy the bar, and watch the World Cup. I remember Croatia beating someone famous 3-1 to one if that dates it. A guy called Jarni scored, and we stumbled back to our tent. By this point it was dark, so we shut up shop and called it a night. Three in their private luxury tent, and three in the pauper, for example school equipment, tent. For the first hour, we kept hearing a cyclist. No lights. 
no other noise. But a cyclist, coming down the path, riding, tinkling the bell. Then silence. And this happened, several times. Each from the same direction, never any return noise. In the morning we got up, looked around. There was nothing. The place was a dead end. There was nowhere for a cyclist to go. We were a little creeped out by the phantom noises, so we headed off to the creepy abandoned fireplace that was our next waypoint. Got stuck in mud, chased by a cow, trapped at a ford, then ended up at a Canadian war memorial before we were picked up. My wife, dog and myself second day of an 80 kilometers hike in Northern Ontario. Killarney Provincial Park. Set up camp on a point, 750 meters, into a lake. One way onto the point and one way off the point. We were hearing wolves since about 9 p.m. Went to bed by 10 and the howls were getting closer and closer. Then one howled from right behind us on the trail down to the point. I got out of the tent and started making lots of noise trying to scare it off. This usually works for bears whom we have had lots of encounters with. I didn't see anything there and didn't hear anything either. Went back to bed and laid down, trying to act confident as to not upset my wife. That when we both heard something outside of the tent, my dog was crazy quiet but shaking. I opened the tent to find a wolf staring at me from about 15 feet away. I grabbed the bear spray and took aim. I didn't use it but I again started screaming at the wolf and took a few charges towards it. Again this usually works when faced with a black bear if you have no escape. The wolf didn't really care that I was there yelling at it. It kind of hung out for a few seconds then kind of very casually walked into the tree line just far enough that I couldn't see it anymore. I built a fire between the tent and the bush, sat up all night, kept my headlamp on all night. Had to listen to three or four wolves howl to each other all night about every 20 minutes. They were very close. The one I would estimate to be within 50 yards. I was sure they were going to come and grab my dog. At about 6 AM a bunch of them started howling all together way more than during the night but it sounded like 10 wolves. We waited until about 8 AM then packed up and got the FK out of there. We were 36 kilometers in. Took us two days to hike in. We hiked out in 6.5 hours. About 1.5 hours into our hike out the wolves started howling behind us again, they were following us out. On the hike out we saw a bear with two cubs, this would usually concern us a bit but we were just like get the fk out of my way. My wife lost all her toenails from the hike. And my poor dog got some serious anxiety about being in the tent. Camping in my backyard with my friend at about age 12 or 13. About 50 feet from my house, right up against some pretty deep woods. Talking to my friend in the tent when we hear something. Then all of a sudden there's an ear splitting snarling sound right against our tent. It goes on for a few seconds then gets quiet. My friend and I are frozen and freaking out. My friend went hunting once and goes on about how's probably a buck. Definitely a buck, probably about to stick its antler through our tent. Or maybe it's a bear. Oh crap. I hope it's not a bear. We're going to die 50 feet from my own house and no one will know. We devise a plan. One will poke their head out and if it's clear we'll run. I look around. Nothing there. We run like crazy into the house where my parents are watching some movie with a black guy driving an old lady around in a taxi. We tell them there was some sort of monster or animal and it was snarling at us. My dad asks, what did it sound like? We say a deer. An angry deer. Or a bear. Probably a bear. Something scary. My dad says, hmm. 
Did it sound like someone growling down a long PVC pipe? Huh? My friends and I used to camp at this abandoned campground. I'm not sure who found it first, or why, but it was free and that's all that mattered. I arrive late the first night so I have to bunk awkwardly with several people in a tent. We just finally figured out how to arrange ourselves so the guys weren't nuts to butts when we heard it. Opera music. Full orchestral accompaniment and a beautiful, though faint, soprano voice. No one else had been in the campground when I got there, I was the last to arrive well after sundown. There were no houses around. A river bordered one side and a large river valley farm was on the other. It was eerily silent all night until the opera singing started. The second year we went there, we expected more singing, which we got, but only on the first night, which was still super creepy but we had been expecting it. But that year we also got a campsite filled with owls. I've never seen this many owls in one place in my life. There had to have been at least a dozen of those orbide bastards hanging out in the bush surrounding our campsite. They didn't seem to be afraid of us since they lingered every single night, observing us as we went about making dinner. Unnerving to say the very least. We never went back to that place and I've honestly never been able to find it on a paper map, this means nothing. I'm bad with maps but I think it's still weird. One summer my family went camping in the Wind Rivers. As we left our site to do some hiking we passed a group of scruffy young guys packing up. I remember one of them smearing mud on the license plates of their trucks. As we hiking along we carried trash bags to pick up litter along the trail. A mile and we started finding bits of burned clothing. The bits grew more numerous as we went up the trail. It became clear that we were picking up white long underwear, drab green pants or shirt, and bits of a bra. We followed the bits off the trail and to a recently abandoned campsite. There had been four small tents set up around it. The clothing that we had been finding clearly came from that fire, which was still smoldering. In fact, the fire pit was a mass of burned something. The area had a feeling associated with it. It made you feel alone, it made your skin crawl. We continued our hike, all the time talking about the oddness of the site. On our return to the trial head we ran into a dozen forest rangers preparing to ride horses up the trail. They questioned us, had we seen a female forest ranger? She hadn't been seen since the day before. This past March I went on a road trip with my then boyfriend. We started in Portland and headed towards Northern California. After a few days of exploring in Northern and Central Oregon we decided to find a camping spot before it got dark. We were in the middle of the Deschutes National Forest and it was snowing heavily, I'd say off to the side of the road had about 9 feet of snow build up. So we decide to just pull off and camp a couple hundred feet from the highway. After stomping down a path in the nine feet snow bank we start building the tent. It starts getting dark so we're trying to pick up the pace, then my ex's dog starts whimpering and she refuses to go back to the car with us to get more supplies. We stay to figure out why she's freaking out and about 10 seconds later a 100 foot tree cracks and falls right across the path I had stomped out. The same one we were about to walk down. We were astounded that she had that intuition and after that decided to curl up in the tent and just cuddle with each other for the night. Hands down the most eerie experience I've ever had. Nearly 20 years ago, my best friend and I were camping with my family. A place we had both basically grown up at, so we knew the location quite well. Anyhow, being the delinquents we were, 
We both left the campsite around midnight 1am to smoke a joint. We walked 5 minutes to a park that was on the ocean, with a dense forest jutting up against it. We are on the beach when we finish smoking, and are enjoying the stars for a few minutes when we both notice something about 150 feet up the beach along the forest trail. I still have a hard time describing what we saw. Approximately six orbs of light appear on the trail, which runs parallel to the beach. They form in a horizontal line and start moving towards us. These lights are orbs, and unlike a flashlight, they do not project any light. No beams like a flashlight, no area like a candle. None of the trees nearby lit up. They were more of a white light, rather than the orange of a candle. Upon them moving towards us, we are both filled with an immediate sense of dread and decide we're not sticking around. We hightail it out of there. My friend glanced over while we were running perpendicular to the location, and he insists he saw them form a circle and hover down to the ground. Upon discussing it for a bit, we go back armed with weapons and flashlights to see and there is nothing to note. I have to iterate that this was not in a location where fireflies reside, and even if there was a human element behind these lights, they were moving towards us at a pace people couldn't possibly move through a wooded forest in pitch dark I'm in my 30s now with a family, and whenever I see my friend, we still talk about it and shake our heads just trying to explain it. What are your thoughts? I was on a hunting trip with my grandparents in very remote Idaho. We were deep in the mountains, at a place only accessible by an ATV or by walking. You couldn't drive there. I think we were about 100 yards from the quads and about 10 miles from the nearest trail a truck could drive on. We were all sitting around the fire in the evening talking about our day when we heard a noise behind us. We turned to look and there was a man with his pack and rifle coming up the mountain towards us. Our first thought was he got lost. This happens from time to time, we figured we could give him a map or a ride back to camp if needed. We watched him come into camp, smile and say hello, grab the half-empty box of Keystone near the cooler, turn around and go back down the mountain. No explanation or anything. We figured that if he needed beer that bad we should just let him have it. Camping in Australia I used to go out into the bush a lot by myself, longest I did was a week straight. I'd go into a reserve with whatever I could fit in my backpack and sleep under the stars in my swag. I'd usually find kangaroo sleeping grounds because they'd invariably be the softest places that were trampled down the best, tip, if you do this, make sure you separate yourself from the ground because of ticks, a simple tarp under you does the trick. The best times was when if you stayed really still you'd wake up surrounded by ruse in the early morning. Anyway my girlfriend of the time decided that we should get away together, and because I liked camping, I could take her out. I decided that my hikes were a little rough for a beginner so we went on a road trip down south, Pemberton, deciding to stop at camping grounds along the way. We stayed at one or two grounds that were totally homogenized. We basically camped on lawn next to a stream next to a highway the first few nights. The fourth night we found a ground that was a little further into nature. We drove two hours down a dirt track. Along the way there were wood signs with the cute names of the campgrounds blossom site, eucalypt ups down etc. Every site we'd gone by was taken and it was going to get dark soon so we thought of turning back and renting a hotel room when we came across a site that was open. It was called simply Goblins. We took out gear and headed off into the bush. We hiked for about 30 minutes down into a gully and back up again. The hiking trail was way overgrown. We eventually got to the campsite. It was overgrown with ferns, there was a dilapidated old stone building with plants growing through its front door's rusty iron bars, the place obviously hadn't seen a human in years. 
There was a sign saying closed, please proceed back to road. There was a stream running nearby with a crumbling edge accompanied by a chorus of frogs. I figured that the stream was eroding its bank and the forestry people didn't want any accidents out here so that's why they'd closed the campground. Well it was getting pretty dark so we decided screw it, let's set up our tents and eat some dinner. We cleared most of the site with my machete. It was all ferns that we chopped back and laid flat then I got a fire going while my GF set up the tent. This forest was like nothing I'd camped in before. Where I am from we had gum trees, just think your typical Australian tree. The trees in Pemberton are all massive, easily over 50 meters, biggest ones are 80 plus. Standing near these you feel like you have been shrunk down in size and are wandering in some type of fairy land. The outside air has a cold bite to it and the night is still. Sitting down to dinner, I start to get a strange feeling that I'd never gotten camping before. Not quite being watched, but more like I was in something else's territory. Having camped with Ruse I knew that usually you'd have to look for conscious signs of other animals to figure out what belonged to who, scratchings, trampled bedding, scat etc. After a while you don't have to look so hard and just spot the signs. When I was setting up camp I didn't see anything, and I couldn't recall anything that showed there were animals nearby. I tried to keep some light banner on to not scare my GF. I avoided the usual scary camp initiation stories that I would tell when taking someone into the bush for the first time while trying to puzzle out what the feeling was. Outside of the pitiful glow of the little campfire it was pitch black. My girlfriend said I'm feeling spooked, is it always like this? I admitted that it didn't. As if being conducted every single frog went silent at once. We heard something out there in the bush. I know what ruse sound like and it wasn't that. It was a loud crash, it sounded like a tree being pushed over, and then lots of little independent footsteps, crushing the foliage and leaves. I said maybe a tree fell and the local possum scampered. Silence. The frog started up again, I loaded up the fire and we retired into our tent. Multiple times during the night we heard footsteps in the foliage and then the sound of lots of small crashes, like lots of small somethings being thrown from the top of one of the massive trees, always preceded by the frogs going silent. At first the sounds were randomly off in an easterly direction, moving slightly north, slightly south but always coming closer. After the fire had died down I heard the sound just outside our campsite. Now that it was closer I could hear it better. The loud walking, like something taking big steps and crushing foliage, a kind of repeated padding sound like someone slapping their plam against the trunk of a tree, then the sound of things falling out of the tree from above. Whatever it was. Paused. I almost went outside with my flashlight and machete but my girlfriend grabbed me tightly and I felt shaking her head no into my shoulder. After what seemed like an eternity we heard it go north and then west, it continued doing whatever it had been previously doing, but now it was circling our tent. A few times during the night we heard the sounds come very close, definitely inside the circle we had cleared for the tent. When the sun came up in the morning we got out of the tent. Our entire campsite was covered in gum nuts. They hadn't been there the night before, we had laid all the ferns flat so nothing was on top of them. Not a single nut was on our tent, they were all spaced about 2 meters away and absolutely covered the ground. They looked like they had been arranged. We decided to hightail it out of there. Coming up with theories in the car, we thought maybe the nuts might have hit the tent and then bounced off and therefore the equal distribution around the tent, but we hadn't heard a single nut hit our tent during the night, and trust me, neither one of us slept a wink. And how does that explain the crashing footsteps, and why did the frog stop singing every time? I think it's the only time I've had that feeling while camping, and if I ever get it again I'm not going to stay. 
I can't find logical explanations for what happened without thinking that something with intelligence and an alien purpose came within the boundary of human marked territory wide out any fear that night. My first time intending to go back country camping we headed to Ojai, and we picked an intentionally unglamorous trail to avoid running into people on the holiday weekend, Labor Day, but still ran into a few more than we'd hoped. Still, after making it six miles up the trail, one of the unreserved NFS camping sites looked better than back country spots but as we settled in some dudes showed up and were hovering around our site for a while. There were technically at least two sites so this wasn't really a problem, but the way they were carrying themselves seemed off. They didn't have backpacking packs, just regular Jansport bags and it didn't seem like enough volume to be carrying supplies to stay the night. It was pretty late, and at least four miles either up or down the trail under pretty steep canyon switchbacks to get to a trailhead, but they were just wearing sneakers. They didn't really make conversation and just sat and ate their packed sandwiches, hovered some more and then asked us if we were planning on staying, which by the half-assembled tent should have been obvious. They eventually collected their things and left as it was getting pretty dark, but they didn't take out any flashlights. Being pretty new to camping and having our own new tent to assemble and food prep to worry about we were just glad they'd gone up over the ridge and we'd likely be alone for the night. There was a fire pit which helped distract us from the crazy number of flies coming from the nearby stream and it wasn't that late when we decided to turn in. The six mile, much hillier than expected hike combined with flies from the stream made stretching out in the tent quite appealing. Even though it was not much past nine, it was pitch black with the new moon. The weather was nice and clear. No clouds and we didn't need the rain fly and thus our Marmot 3P gives you almost totally open view of the sky through the Microtech mesh or whatever it's called. We stared up at the starts and you could see so many more constellations away from LA, a bit of the haze of the Milky Way. And all around it had been a successful last minute camping trip, but despite being exhausted from the hike I was having trouble sleeping. An empty feeling stomach from hiking rations critters rustling the dead grass, and the discovery that my new headlamp gave me vision on the exact location of each and every one of the sparkly eyeballs of the hundreds of spiders sprinkled around the tent were making it hard to fall back asleep. I'd doze off for a bit, then have one of those hyper-realistic, temporal-relevant dreams where you think you just woke up and I see somebody pacing the perimeter of our campsite. I freeze, plan my next action and then a cartoonishly large wild boar barges into the campsite, scares the person away, turns towards me and I realize it's a dream. Heart racing it takes me even longer to fall back asleep. I have a couple more dreams. Someone wakes me up to bring me food. Someone found better bug spray. Someone found live ashes in the fire we definitely put out. Then eventually a really long dream but not from the campsite and it's about a time I almost got mugged back in my hometown of Baltimore. I start awake again and I'm getting really frustrated. It felt like I hadn't gotten any sleep at all. It was going to be a long hike back, and I had gotten overtired on the way out and I was legitimately worried about slipping going back down the canyon trails that would be more precarious to pick our way back down with all the gear than they had been to hike up. My boyfriend was asleep, and had been adamant about not taking a hundred pictures and being present in the moment, which I get, but I snuck out my phone just check the time. Took forever to power back on, no signal, not surprising, and holy crap. It's not even 11. I'm both relieved to have plenty of time to sleep and annoyed that after struggling to sleep through so many dreams it's so early. I toss and turn some more and eventually just settle in and stare at the new stars coming up over the ridge. I doze off again. Who knows how long later I wake up to a loud metal click. It's impossibly bright, but not morning. Up on the ridge there's a bright white torch that's illuminating my whole tent. 
Boyfriend is still asleep. I freeze and assess. No one moves and I hold in place long enough to be sure it's not a dream. Someone is definitely standing on the ridge shining a daylight style flashlight on us. I question the critter rustling, and the dreams about the people moving around the camp. I try to wake my boyfriend quietly so we can decide what to do, and as soon as he's half awake he starts against the bright light. I manage to shush him before he gets louder and we commence to whispering about what's going on and what to do. Is it those guys? I check my phone. No signal. And it's not even midnight. They could definitely just be on the way back. But why so late? Why just stand there shining their light on our tent, blinding us, creating this massive five-pointed star type lens flare type effect through the tech fabric? Eventually we decide the only thing we can do to break the standoff is get out of the tent and show them we're awake. Maybe they'll move along like last time or at least we won't be ambushed trapped inside the tiny tent and we'll be able to run. My boyfriend grabs the shovel slash mallet tool now combination poo shoveling, tent construction, drifter attacking implement and I put on my shoes. We quietly unzip the tent and as the flap pushes back the light starts shimmering then the flare disappears. It is replaced by the moon. Turns out it wasn't a new moon. We'd just gone to sleep so early it hadn't risen yet and we were so close to the base of the ridge and under a live oak canopy that reduced visibility of what would have been very high contrast moon shadows. The moon was full and was staggeringly bright. And it would have been obvious it was the moon but the new tech fabric of the tent resembled a dragonfly eye. It's green slash gold slash orange and changes color depending on the direction you look at it from. We laughed, went back to sleep. I still had a crappy night's sleep but the remainder of the trip was uneventful. Packing up to leave I saw that my phone that I'd pulled out was totally in the path of the sleeping bag zipper and next to my ear could easily have been the loud click waking me up as I rolled over. The same tent has served us well in Joshua Tree but now I know to disregard the distortions of the tent fabric and do my high fidelity star gazing before turning in for the night. I went solo hiking in the Guadalupe Mountains, West Tezas. After a 3,000 feet climb I stopped and set up camp just on the edge of a ridge top clearing and ate dinner. Now it's dusk. I'm lounging, reclined on my sleeping pad, watching the first stars come out, not a care in the world. Until suddenly, with absolute certainty, I feel I'm being watched. The 21st century part of brain tries to reason it away. The reptilian part tells me to head back to my tent. As I walk across the clearing I begin to hear something not small coming through the shadowy undergrowth. I think, maybe it doesn't know I'm here but will head off if it does. I yell. It keeps coming. Great, so it's large and doesn't give a flying F I'm here. I play my flashlight across the forest until I see a pair of eyes. And a second pair of eyes, closer together and nearer the ground. About 15 feet away. Bear and cub. I dive in my tent. And the pair come closer, so close I can hear the individual crackle of snot and spittle when the mother breathes out and snorts, now probably 5 feet away. I'm convinced I'm a dead man and decide to tap out a final message to my mom in the notes app of my phone. I love you. What I figured out later is the pair were after my food bag a couple hundred feet further on. But the ridge was so steeply sided they basically had to pass through my campsite, situated on the only flat bit of land. It is an elemental, humbling feeling when you're suddenly not on the top rung of the food chain ladder. When I was about 14 I was hunting with my dad and brothers. My oldest brother already had a deer hanging and we were settling into our tent for the night. At one point during the night something started making a bunch of noise outside. 
A group down the road from us had a few dogs so we just assumed that's what it was. At one point it was literally rubbing against our tent so my dad decided to elbow it as hard as he could. It took off and we went back to sleep. In the morning my brother's deer was gone. The area around the tree it was hanging from and our tent was covered in bear tracks. Flash forward about five years. I'm elk hunting with my uncle and some of his friends. One of the days I went on a hunt with his buddy Tyler. Tyler gets an elk down about 30 minutes before dark. We get over to it and as we are cleaning it we start hearing wolves howl in the distance, slowly getting closer. Every minute that passes the smell of death gets thicker, the sky gets darker, and the wolves get closer. It's dark now. All I can see is what's directly in the beam of my mini maglite and Tyler's hat Bill Light as he works on the elk as fast as he can while I keep a watch on the wolves. We are surrounded. I don't know how many there are. Feels like dozens, it was probably only a few. I can hear them running circles around us and yelping back and forth at each other. Occasionally I get sight of them in the light and then they are gone. Every once in a while, one would get brave and dart in within a few yards and try snagging a piece of the elk. Finally the elk is cleaned and we have what we call the scent circle around the carcass to keep it as safe as possible. Now all that was left was a three mile hike back to camp completely covered in blood and being trailed by wolves. By far the most horrifying experience of my life. My university friends and I had a great little spot in an old abandoned quarry where we would have bonfires. The trees had grown in and made it more forest than quarry, but it provided lots of rocky spots for fire pits and seating, and lots of firewood. We knew that area like the back of our hand, and it became ours. We bought axes and saws and we made a more clear path. When the heavy snow fell, we knew which trees had just fallen. When we played paintball there we knew every route and shortcut. It was a gorgeous little location, a little cliff overlooking a pond and a waterfall. All surrounded by hills, and an uninterrupted view of the night sky. One night we were out. It wasn't the full group, actually. Most were away. It was just I and one male friend setting up, though we expected upwards of 20 people. We were nearly ready and the sun was well down and people had arrived when we found the camp. Somebody had been living in the quarry, they had a rain catcher, their belongings, a lean-to, the whole nine yards. Maybe half a kilometer away from our campsite. Always wondered about that. We didn't see him that night, but we did hear some rustling in the bushes. Nobody felt like going to check. I was camping in a county park north of Washington DC with my parents. I slept in and when I woke up, my parents were at the campground office to pay or so. I heard footsteps on the gravel surrounding my tent, and someone pulling the zipper on my dad's tent. I first thought it was my dad but it somehow didn't sound like him. Scared that they might open my tent next, I yawned loudly, stretched my arms so the tent would shake a bit and just made some cliché wake-up noises until I heard their footsteps as they were running away. Apparently, the county parks in the area have major issues with gangs robbing their guests. Oh, and a few days earlier, the bear-proof bin in Shenandoah National Park next to our tents were opened by a bear during the night and when I went to the bathroom the next morning, I saw two skunks eating the rubbish, which was cool. This is my friend's story. But since I was there and partially involved, I'm going to tell it anyway, he might actually see this. This seems like a post he would read. So a couple of buddies of mine, I'll call the Redditor Luis, and the other one Ned. We hiked part of the long trail in Vermont last July, and this occurred near Brandon Gap. After a day of hiking, we came up to a cabin, 
which was already full of people. Being the antisocial people that we are, we decided to find another campsite. Fast forward a couple hours, and it's almost night, and we haven't found a campsite yet, so are forced to clear off some of the debris beside the trail and put our tents down there, very uncomfortable. Ned and I fall asleep pretty quick, but Luis wasn't so lucky. He is in a really crappy spot, and stays awake trying to move the sticks and rocks under his tent. Anyway, according to Luis, this occurred at around midnight or 1 am. As he is shifting around in his tent, he realizes that the forest has gone silent. No animals crunching leaves, no crickets, no more of the omnipresent insect buzzing. It was an unsettling silence, like the forest was holding its breath. So, like all the other forest creatures, he stops moving, and went quiet too. And that's when he started to hear breathing. Deep, low breaths, coming from the trail. He was very clear that he heard no footsteps or crunching leaves slash sticks. It stopped by his tent, and started to circle our little camp. At this point, Luis was terrified. He had no idea what was out there in the dark. All he could do is stay silent and listen as the breathing slowly circled our tents for around 20 minutes, pausing by his tent each time. His fear kept him quiet. This is where I get involved. I talk in my sleep a lot, and have been known to say slash do some crazy things, different stories, but it's worth noting that it's not unusual for me to talk in my sleep. Anyway, according to Luis, right as the breathing passed my tent I said, whoa, there's something really cool in my tent. And right afterwards, the breathing stopped, and the forest sounds resumed, and the insects started buzzing again. Luis, still scared, waited about an hour before waking me and net up with his whispered yells, and told me what I have just told you. went on a hiking slash camping trip with a couple buddies in Yellowstone. One day we were hiking and accidentally got on an animal trail. The sun was starting to set and we were miles from our car so we found a nice little clearing and made camp for the night. I was paranoid about running into a bear and talked about it several times a day, so I convinced my buddies to hide our food in a tree about 100 feet from our tent. About 4 am that night I woke up and heard a large animal very close to the tent. I woke up my friends and told them there was a bear. You could tell the animal was massive from its footsteps, the snapping of twigs beneath it, the sound it made brushing by plants. My friends were now convinced it was a bear and we all started to panic. Then the tent started to move. The animal slowly pushed in on the walls of the tent reaffirming its huge size. We stared at each other paralyzed with fear when we heard the creature's horrifying yell, Mo. It was a damn cow. The clearing we camped on was part of a guy's farm we wandered onto. My friends still make fun of me for it to this day. One of my long-time best friends and I had a tradition to meet somewhere and go camping every New Year's. We went to one of our favorite places and were walking around trails we had walked for years in the dense woods around a lake shortly after sunrise chatting about life, plans, catching up. A lake around sunrise is one of the most peaceful, quiet, and calming things when it's really cold. No birds, bugs, or animals are even making rustling noises. We are enjoying this peaceful chat with a hike and then we hear some twigs snapping. Weird, there weren't any cars parked at the lot when we got here last night. Must be a deer or something. We kept walking for a few yards then heard it again. We looked around, saw a figure over six feet tall, dark in color, built like a bear, while squinting to see through the thick woods. We only had a pocket knife and a small sheathed knife and this was horrifying to see. 
We kept slowly walking to not show panic while keeping an eye on the figure, which was now following us at a distance of 10 to 20 yards and was becoming more visible. After a few minutes of trying to keep our cool, not go into a panic run, and get back to our campsite, we find a deer. It was a large buck that was ripped into two halves with fresh blood all over the trail and scattered meat around the trail. We kept walking for another minute, which felt like an hour, then bolted when we looked back, didn't see or hear the large figure in the woods, and bolted back to our campsite. We packed up in a hurry, found a park ranger, and all he said was there were rumors of various predators that were being seen in the area for the first time in decades, but didn't have any confirmed sightings or prints. I never figured out what that was in the woods. I was camping in a national park once late in the camping season. There weren't that many people in the park to begin with, and the campsites were pretty spread out so you really didn't see anyone else much. One night though, I woke up and it was obvious the campfire was brightly lit up, the tent flaps were closed but I could see the light and hear the fire. I could have sworn I had poured water on the fire before I went to bed, so I got scared, and I heard someone walking around the campfire. I didn't dare open my tent flap, I pretended to lay silently hoping whoever it was would go away. Eventually that person did put the fire out and walk away, but that was probably the scariest experience of my life. Luckily I had my dog in the tent with me, although I doubt she would have been much help if anything did happen. A few years ago I went on a solo three-day backpacking trip in a national forest. I left work early on Friday, grabbed my gear, and headed out on the three-hour drive to the trailhead. It was March, but a storm had brought in a warm front and it had rained very hard for much of the day but luckily it was down to a light drizzle when I arrived around 1800. Due to the temperature change and the mist it was very foggy with lots of low-lying clouds. I strapped on my pack and hit the trail so I could cover as much ground as possible that day. Plus, I already had a campsite location picked out that I had been to before. As it got darker, the mist and fog seemed to grow thicker. Maybe 30 minutes before dark while hiking up the first mountain, my planned campsite at the top, through the fog I saw a tent a few meters off the trail. It had two camp chairs in front but it looked a little disheveled. I always try to keep to myself when in the wilderness and want other people to do the same. So, I didn't look very closely and planned to hike by with the assumption that they had already sacked out, or, maybe were side hiking somewhere. However, I started getting that twitchy feeling at the base of my neck. A general uneasiness that something was not right here. At first I ignored it and just blamed it on the creepy weather slash circumstances. It intensified as I got even with the tent and grew immensely as I passed it and it was behind me. I think this is the only time in my life that I've had an instinctual feeling that something was not right at my core. I gave the tent a good look over my shoulder and saw it was unzipped and something laying in the floor. After trying to ignore it I finally decided that something was definitely wrong and if someone was hurt then I might be the only one to pass by for days. They could die if I didn't check it out. So, adrenaline flowing freely and with great apprehension, I stopped, turned, and softly said hello? No response. A little louder I said hey, is there anyone there? Nothing. Basically yelling, I said hello. One more time but still no answer. With nerves screaming, I slowly approached the tent while still trying to look every direction at the same time out of fear of someone watching or waiting. When I got close enough to see through the mist in the near twilight, I saw a sleeping bag partially wadded up in the floor of the tent along with a red slash green slash black plaid long sleeve shirt and a pair of men's white brief underwear, curled down at the leg holes, that I'm pretty sure had poo stains in them. All of this was soaking wet with a considerable amount of water sitting in the bottom of the tent as well. 
one of the tent poles was broken and the roof was sagging in due to pooled water. I didn't know quite what to make of this but everything I previously felt about something being wrong doubled when I saw the state of the tent and its contents. Now that I knew there was no one there I felt my obligations as a potential passing good Samaritan were fulfilled so I continued on my hike. But, I was sure not camping one kilometer away where I had originally planned to. I was putting a lot of distance between that site and me. So, thoroughly freaked about what may or may not have happened at that tent. I continued hiking. When I reached the top of that mountain I saw two tents off in the mist. Curious if they knew anything about the scene I had recently passed, I called out hello. There was a slight rustling that I assume was someone rolling over in their sleeping bag in the tent closest to me but no reply. At this point, my nerves were raw and I couldn't take the suspense so I decided f this, I'm out of here. I continued my hike with extreme zeal, into the dark, through the misting rain, into the clouds at the peak of each mountain, with only the dim light of my 80 lumen headlamp for another 10 kilometers before I finally decided that I was far enough away that hopefully I'd be safe. Imagine hiking for hours in the dark slash rain with visibility of a few meters after that experience. It was unsettling. For better or worse, I was trying ultra lightweight camping so I didn't even have a tent to protect me from the boogeymen lurking out in the dark damp forest. So, I strung a tarp between two trees and laid down on the ground for a night of very restless sleep. I slept on my back, headlamp fixed to my head, just in case, and my handgun resting on my chest in its holster. In addition to this day being one of the only times I've felt a deep seat instinctual fear that something is wrong, it's also the only time that I've praised our Lord and Savior, the flying spaghetti monster, that I carried a firearm for fear that it may be needed. Luckily, nothing too creepy happened that night. So long as you don't count needing to pee at 3 a.m. when you're pretty sure you witnessed a murder slash rape slash kidnapping scene a few kilometers back. But, urination happened and I was not murdered. I continued my trip and nothing eventful occurred for the rest of it. Except that I didn't see a single other person. But, with the storm and the time of the year I suppose that wasn't too surprising. When I got out, I talked to a USFS ranger and told him about what I'd seen and he said he'd check it out. Not sure if that ever happened or not, I never called to check on it. So, hopefully it was just some drunk kids who shat their pants, got caught in a deluge, and abandoned camp. Surely that's it, right? Man, retelling this story is raising the hair on the back of my neck and giving me the all-around ghibli ghiblies. That was some creepy stuff. So this happened to me over the past summer. Me and a friend were hiking into the woods on the far side of a local mountain. We were basically bush walking for a couple hours. There were no trail maps for over here. Anyways, at a certain point we found an old alpine patrol road and followed it. When we came around the corner, my friend stopped me and pointed ahead. Off the side of the trail was a camouflage tarp set up with some old camping equipment underneath. Being the dumb teenagers we were, we got closer to check out the abandoned site. Whoever had lived there was obviously a slob. They had left some nice hiking shoes behind, but also tons of garbage, wrappers, containers, and orange peels. Thus was the first thing to tip us off that something was not right. Any organic food should have decomposed if this camp was as old as we thought. As this was setting in, my friend turned to me with a carton of juice in his hand. This doesn't expire until next year. Now we were seeing all the signs. There was a cooler on the ground, and kitchen pots that were still shiny. There was a trail to the slope that we could see had human poo dumped down it. This camp wasn't abandoned at all. Once it really clicked, we got out of there fast. We never saw anyone 
but for all we know they were watching our every move. The really scary thing about that is that you just don't know what kind of person owns that camp. They could have been a kindly hermit, or they could have stabbed us and eaten our flesh. I'm glad we didn't stick around to find out. I was camping while making El Camino de Santiago. I had to go back home one day and the bus that took me there left at 10 am in Bilbao, and I was like 4 hours away from there. So I thought about waking up really early, 5 am, walk 2 hours to a town nearby and catch a bus there to Bilbao. And let me tell you, it wasn't the most fun thing to walk around the forests in Cantabria at night. But I could deal with it. Barely. Until I saw some kind of creepy building structure and I'm like okay, that must be cause the town is nearby. I kept walking towards it and figure out it was a cemetery. Okay, cool, not a problem. It's just a cemetery, don't worry I said out loud as I sped up my pace. And as I'm making it past, I heard like some faint sound of steps, but not quite human steps. And, as I turned around, I heard a loud, breathing noise. It sent me the biggest chill down my spine as I pointed my flashlight to the sound, met with a large dumb face of a horse. For some reason, a barn was right beside that cemetery. I almost peed myself, and I had to sit down to recover. I'm telling you, that jump scare took like five years off my life. There is a very long gravel road about 100 yards from my house. I lived in a decently populated neighborhood that is in front of 400 acres of untouched woods. When I was 16 myself and a few friends decided to walk all the way down the gravel road. We walked about a mile and a half and that was the furthest I had ever wandered. We came across the most creepy, battered, rusty barn. The barn also had a few small buildings around it making us think it was an abandoned farm. We went into the first and smallest of the buildings and it immediately dawned on us we were in somebody's old bedroom. There was an old metal framed bed with a ripped and soaked mattress and the similar stain was on the wall behind the bed. There was a box that we found an old yearbook in and in the back it said congrats class of 68. There was men's clothing mainly jeans and some long underwear in the box also. There were also some records fly fishing books and a folded piece of paper that as we began reading it was a man's suicide note. We stopped reading it and we had this Goonies moment where we all looked at each other and said let's get out of here in synchronization. We saw a hole on top of the barn that we could see something that looked like bowling pins. We went inside the barn and climbed up this sketchy ladder when I got to the top I saw three dolls in white dresses with red ribbons up top. The dolls looked brand new and recently placed in the room. That was when we got out of there and I haven't gone back there since. My parents dog loves to go back there and play and go for walks. Whenever I go home to visit I take him back there and I always make sure I am now armed. I'm 26 and I'm still creeped out about that. This was pretty strange for me. A couple years ago I went backpacking on an island that you had to take a ferry to. It was late in the season, so the ferry only came once a week. Because of this, you had to carry a lot of stuff in. On the way there, I noticed a guy in a business suit in his mid-twenties on the ferry. He sounded British. When we arrived at the island, I noticed that he only had a very small backpack, not big enough for a tent, sleeping bag, any real amount of food, or anything. It was about the size of a kid's school bag and it looked like it wasn't full all the way. I was mildly concerned that he didn't know he was going to be staying there all week. There were no workers, services, or places to stay on the island. He hurried away in a different direction than us. Throughout the week, my group and I noticed strange things along the paths. 
Small sticks were laid out in different shapes or words. Berries were crushed and smeared on small rocks laid in small lines. Three stones stacked on top of each other on a log. We ended up passing by him once on a trail about three days in. He didn't look tired or dirty or anything. Right after we passed him we found a message on a rock scratched on saying, thank you. This was weirding me out especially hard because I finished watching Lost for the first time the week earlier. The end of the week came and we were waiting for the ferry. I was looking around for this guy. He showed up just a few minutes before it arrived. He looked the same from the first day. We all boarded and he was going to get on last. Right when he was about to step up, a ferry worker got off of the ferry and told him he needed to stay back with him. They then walked down the dock and talked. We couldn't hear anything but the suit guy didn't look upset. Then the ferry worker waved us off and we left without them. This was supposed to be the last ferry of the year. The summer between my freshman and sophomore years of college, my brother, two other friends and I all took a three-day, 42-mile float down the lower Buffalo River in the Buffalo National Forest, R. Once you get past the rush entry area, there is pretty much nothing for another 28-ish miles. No cell service, no civilization, nothing. Which is, of course, usually why I like going out into the bush. Then again, I usually meticulously plan all details and supplies for any trip. This trip was no different. I had all food, supplies, amount of miles per day, tentative, all figured out. The one piece of gear I didn't think about, however, was any kind of self-defense. If you've ever encountered a mountain lion, poke it in the eye doesn't work too well, I assume. All we had for any type of defense was small, about 3-inch bladed pocket knives. That wouldn't do anything to any attacking wildlife but piss it off. The third and final night of the float was glorious. We camped across from the elephant head rock. It was the perfect spot. We had a nice, level rock beach on which to make our campfire and cook our food and hang out till bedtime. Also, up from the water about 20 yards, we had a soft sand bar on which to pitch our tent for added comfort while sleeping. After everything was set up, we feasted. We had overplanned our meals, especially since the first day we were running off of adrenaline and didn't stop to eat lunch, horrible idea. So, we thought screw it. Let's eat everything. We cooked everything we had left and left not a single morsel unconsumed. We burned all of our trash, also not a good idea, and then spent the last of our I'm lazy and don't feel like gathering tinder light or fluid creating giant fire tornadoes in the night, great idea. Then, we headed to bed. So, there we were. Four exhausted, Food comed 20-something slowly drifting off to our last night of rest in the beautiful forest. Suddenly, we heard a horrid, blood-curdling banshee wail off to our left about 75 yards. Only one animal I know of makes that sound. And there wasn't a single unclenched butthole in the tent. We started reassuring ourselves saying things like um. That's a weird sounding. Bird. Right guys? as we cuddled our tiny, useless pocket knives. Next we heard another whale answer the first about 25 yards off to our right. Finally we heard a third call across the river and then a sploosh is something, and by something I mean giant doom cat with death claws, swam across toward our camp. We unassuredly reminded ourselves that at that time, summer 2007, according to the Game and Fish Commission of Arkansas, there were no mountain lions in the state of Arkansas. Which means, we don't want to go through the bureaucracy of changing our laws slash statutes to make the necessary adjustments to acknowledge the mountain lions that everyone so obviously knows are already here. Armed with that knowledge, we reluctantly drifted off into much needed sleep. 
If not for the previous two days of high activity canoeing and a smorgasbord of a camp meal, no one would have slept that night. The next morning, as we were breaking camp, we noticed tracks all around our campfire ashes from the lions snooping and trying to find any morsels that we had burned away. We finally admitted to one another, once we were down river and waiting on our ride to pick us up, that there were totally mountain lions prowling around our campsite, we could have died, and we are all idiots for not bringing any of the many rifles our family owned. For God's sake, when going into the bush, take a weapon. I was out with a group camping in the mountains of New Mexico. Me and my brother went to fill these two water containers down by a stream about a five minute walk from our site. It was about six. The stream was only wide enough for us to fill one jug at a time. My brother had filled his first. Our group wanted water as soon as possible to start cooking dinner. My brother went to return his jug and left me filling mine. The sun had started setting when I heard the brush rustling. I figured it was just a chipmunk, as we had been seeing them all week. The rustling persisted, and I heard a low growl. I realized that we were in mountain lion country, and they hunted at dawn and dusk. It had just gotten dark. I sealed my jug that was only three quarters full, and noticed a furry paw stick out from underneath the tree line. I walked away extremely briskly back to the site. I know mountain lions stalk their prey before attacking, and do so to seemingly weak prey when they are either weakest or aware of the lion. I did not run as to not alarm my stalker, but was carrying a gallon and a half of water so I was walking a little awkwardly. I was only about 15 at the time, but I made it back to sight without any surprises on the way back. When I was like nine, we brought our dogs along for their first camping trip. Well, they were all tethered down and it was early morning. My mom comes to me and my sister and points to the nearby stream. Crossing the stream was a mother moose and its calf. It's all quiet until the three dogs see the moose and go ballistic. The moose stomps into the campsite, smashing stuff and going after the dogs. My sister and I ran into the woods and hid until the commotion was over. Everything was fine, including the dogs, except for a picnic table and a new bullet hole in the side of a tree that my dad fired that scared the moose and the calf off. I've never had good camping trips, most of them were disasters. In Boy Scouts we were out camping at a fairly well-used campsite. We were up way past the leaders, so probably a bit past midnight. It all starts when we see this bright white light at the top of a nearby mountain. That light slowly starts making its way down the mountainside, directly towards us. At first we think it's a mountain biker, but then it keeps coming straight at us where there's no trail. Then the light speeds up, way faster than any human can travel. Now the light is at the base of the mountain and coming straight at us only a few hundred yards away. At this point we're freaked out, and jump into our tents, zip the door closed, and dive into our sleeping bags. Seconds later a huge flash of light erupts in the middle of our campsite, and then it's gone. After we stopped screaming and cowering we went back outside and there was no evidence of the light source anywhere to be found. To this day I have no idea what it was. I got permits with two friends to camp in a summer campground off-season, which meant that none of the facilities were open and the place was abandoned. It's on a backpacking route so they have a permit system for through hikers but was technically a car camping place. We set up our tent and one of my friends runs off to pee. She encounters a guy wandering around who seems really excited to find out he's not the only one on the campground. He has no permit and just drove through looking for a place to stay. 
He chats with her for a bit and invites her to have dinner because he has some extra eggs. Then she notices he has a gigantic knife. She realizes she's having a conversation in a deserted campground with a knife-wielding dude and quickly goes back to our campsite. She tells us about this guy and we are a little freaked out. Then, my other friend and I are walking around and we run into this guy, still with a giant knife half the length of his arm. He seems very surprised to see us, and then says, I ran into someone earlier but I thought she was alone. How many of you are there? A dude with a giant knife wants to know how many of us are there and seems upset and surprised that our friend isn't alone. Maybe he was just mad that he didn't have enough eggs for all of us but we didn't stick around long enough to find out. Camping for the first time at Caddo Lake in Northeast Texas. We got there around noon to set up camp. It's beautiful, tall thick pines, cypress trees. Really nice. And quiet. And still too quiet. So we make camp, my wife and I, and start our little walk around the park, just to scope it out. It is deathly quiet in this place. We went up a nature trail, it was odd because there were so many downed trees in the path in various stages of being cleared. Which was cool and all, but for me, the walls started caving in. I started having a panic attack in the middle of the trail. So still there. So quiet. I was lucky my wife has her ways to calm me down. LOL. On the back to camp, we swing by some pond, I don't remember the name offhand, but I swear to Christ it's the same pond from it when they see Georgie's dead father rise out of the muck. Makes cringe just thinking about it. We get back to camp. Make what fire we can from our wet ass wood. Eat and get ready to turn in. By now it drizzling and getting cold. All of a sudden, all at once, the damn wildlife decides to show up all of them all at once. And then the trees started falling. I kid you not, one after another. Seemed like every 40 minutes, we would hear a giant pine tree break and start falling until it hit the soggy ground. I never made it to sleep. Constantly in fear of being crushed by a 40-ton tree that hates us for no reason. Probably not the ghost story you wanted to hear, but between the, very, odd lack of movement in the daytime, and the utter outburst of impending danger at night. Caddo Lake is creepy as hell to me and it still is. Never again. That whole region of Texas is now known as the thickness to us. When I was 12 I went to week camps a lot. They had this camping canoe overnight trip which was a blast. Also helped that I grew up on that seven lake chain so I would always lead the way to the campsite. The first time I went there me and a few other girls went to go get firewood for s'mores so we went really far back into the woods. It was like pitch black BTW. Found firewood blah blah then started to head back. I swear to life there was someone in the woods, extremely tall wearing a nightgown, looked bald, which does not match my short-ass campmates. Skip the boring parts we just ran back to the campsite. A week later there was a reported kidnapping 15 minutes away. Riding out a tornado while backcountry camping. We were camping on a mountain in North Georgia which on one side is near a small town. Service is spotty up there but about 11. 45 my father-in-law sends me a text that said very bad storms headed our way. We were already settled for the night and the hike back to the car was at least an hour, especially at night, so no chance of beating it. About 20 minutes later we hear tornado sirens from the small town near the mountain. A couple minutes later the weather starts to get very bad. 
We are in a small big Agnes backpacking tent and it starts to blow to the side and water rushes in from under the rain fly. At this point we're scared shitless about a tree falling on us so we put our backpacks on for protection and get into a tornado position I learned in school. We hear the hammock campers about 150 yards away start to scream. Lightning, thunder, and strong wind for about 20 minutes and then it's over. The tent held and as far as I know no one got hurt. Edit. Wanted to add that we were camping about 20 feet from a cliff side so the winds that were hitting us were full force. My parents do a lot of off-season camping with their truck camper. It was late winter slash almost spring on the west coast of Vancouver Island which is the open Pacific Ocean. My brother and I decided to drive out to camp with them for the weekend. Since the camper is small we brought one of our tents. We get a lot of rain here so we're prepared for that with a high-end tent, properly pegged down and trenching around it so there's no flooding. However, while we were there the forecast changed and the winds came up. They got up to gale force which is like 50 to 100 kilometers per hour. At this point we went to bed and things were okay, just very loud. Tent was still good. During the night the wind changed to hurricane force winds which is like 120 plus km per hour. It was so loud. The fly of the tent was whipping around so hard I honestly thought it got ripped off. Eventually I must have fallen asleep because I remember waking up to calm conditions and dawn breaking. With a little bit of light coming up I could see that the tent was still intact and we were completely dry. There was a ton of sand in the tent though, the wind pushed the sand under the fly, through the mesh vents and there were like little sand dunes on our sleeping bags. I'm grateful for the quality of those Sierra design tents. I'm amazed it survived hurricane force winds, keeping us dry the entire time, even if we didn't get much sleep. We didn't actually know the winds were classified as hurricane force until we got home, as we didn't have any cell service out there. We looked up the storm online after and saw that we survived a night with over 120 km per hour winds. Myself and two other friends, all female, 15 years old at the time, thought it would be a really good idea if we lied to our parents where we were, and instead went camping. I managed to sneak out my dad's basic tent, a few light sleeping bags, and off we went. We got on a bus to the campsite and thought we could just walk in and stay there. The forest ranger came along and said we couldn't stay as we didn't buy a pitch for the night and they were full. I can still recall him following us out of the grounds in his truck. So there we were, outside of this campsite with the sun starting to go down and nowhere to go. The last bus had already left for the night and we were too afraid to call our parents and admit where we really were and what we were doing. So, what did we decide to do? Well. Go to the beach and camp of course. We walked around 40 minutes in the dark to the beach and set up the tent. It was absolutely freezing and we were filled with dread abs anxiety about the situation we found ourselves in. The minutes felt like hours and there was a sense in the air that we were all feeling extremely nervous. We sat around just praying for morning to come so we could get the bus, but it grew colder and colder. Around 2 a.m. two police officers were doing the rounds and spotted us. We told them what had happened and, weirdly, instead of taking us home slash calling our parents etc., they took us to the closest hostel and allowed us to sleep on the living room floor for the night. Of course, the police called us stupid for doing what we did, but the hostel owner told them not to worry. The three of us lay on that living room floor all night in complete silence until dawn when we could get the next bus. Looking back now I am 33 years old I cannot believe how dangerous the situation we got ourselves into was. 
What would have happened if the wrong people had have found us on this remote beach at night? This was before the times when everyone had a phone and access to Uber etc. Not that we could have afforded one. Wouldn't recommend. So me and my friends went stargazing to a mountain, not far from my village. The village was so close we could see the lights shining in the distance. The mountain is accessible by road, but it's a dirt road and not very wide, in some places two cars cannot pass next to each other. So we arrive there, and the sun barely lights the sky up. I took the opportunity to turn the car back to face where we came from so it wouldn't be a struggle later on. We sat there and talked about everything whilst we were looking at the stars. It started to get cold so we went to sit back in the car. The moon is out and is lighting up the road, but not that much. Suddenly I get this feeling something isn't right, like something is about to happen. I asked my friends and they felt the same. Then. I look in the rear view mirror and from the distance I see a shadowy figure speeding towards the car. One of my friend had those military flashlights so he points it towards it. It didn't look like a human for sure. In a split second I start up the car and race out of there. Now at that time I had an old car, and you shouldn't go faster than 20 to 30 kilometers per hour due to the poor road quality. But I was here doing 50 to 70 kilometers per hour. There was a chance the car might flip, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get away as fast as possible. When we eventually made it home I see the left tire on the back was flat. I didn't mind, knowing we were safe. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't take the time to turn the car when we arrived on the mountain. So I went camping every year for two weeks in the summer without church. It's not like we're praying all the time. We were just brought together trough the church. A week in our trip the counselors played a game with stations with us. They were spotted in the woods and had many games. My group was up first and we started walking. First we had to jump over a small creek and then climb up a hillside. It was possible but still hard. After we completed our first games we had to carry a tree trunk back and forth as many times as possible. We did it a few times, which was exhausting. We were like six people BTW. So I twised my ankle and fell to the ground. My group didn't even realize because I was in the back. As I stood up I realized I couldn't put any weight on my foot. I freaked out, but I thought I could not cry because I was the oldest 16 at the time. So I kinda limped to my group. Our 17 years slash O counselor was a bit overstrained. I sat down and we looked at my ankle. It was swollen so badly. There was a swelling as big as a tennis ball. I'd cow was shaking and so afraid I might had to go home. The counselor called our camp leader to look at this. We had to wait a bit because the others obviously had to climp the hillside. The leader let's call him Mark brought another one with him. They decided to carry me down the hill. The other way back would have been 2 kilometers the other only 5 minutes. On our way we came across another group and we stopped to rest. My friend who was in this group told me later that I was not responsive at all. I just stared into the wood. In the next 20 minutes they tried to bring me down. It was scary. The way was even difficult if you're not carrying somebody. Then we had to jump over the creek, which was not gonna happen. My two guys here were exhausted so the next two came to carry me. Shortly after they put me into the car and we drove to the hospital in the next big city. At the hospital I had to do the usual tests and stuff but then the doc casually told me I had to give myself injections in my belly every day. After all I was allowed to stay, because my parents didn't realize how bad my injury was. I had a torn cruciate ligament so I had crutches for the next week. It was pretty chill, 
because I couldn't do any duties. But it was kinda weird getting carried by those men. I know them since I was 11 but still weird. Till today I freak out when anything similar happens to my ankle and I get a panic attack. In 1988, my boyfriend, his twin brother, and I were camping at Browns Lake in Colorado. It's about a nine mile hike in. Very isolated. No one else around. My boyfriend and I shared a tent while his brother was in another tent. My boyfriend and I slept soundly. When we got up in the morning, his brother said he heard a loud crashing sound during the night. In between our tents, we found a large rock with a rope tied around it. We reasoned someone flung it and tried to aim it at one of our tents and missed. We got the F out of there. Saw a fisher slash possible wolverine in an area that isn't supposed to have them, and had no idea what I was looking at. They walk very unnaturally, with jerky movements and when they're running it looks like their legs are on backwards. Very similar movement to those Boston Dynamics robots. It didn't have any interest in us, but we all saw it and all collectively said what the ever-loving F was that animal? I still have no idea what it was, but if I had to guess I'd say a very large fisher. In 1993 I was hiking with a buddy on Mount, Arjuna, Java, Indonesia. Our plan was to hike to a hut two-thirds of the way up and camp overnight, then continue to the summit in the morning. We got started late, and as darkness started to fall, along with a persistent rain, we hadn't reached the hut. It was really dark, so we decided to sleep out in bivy sacks, basically ziplocs for people. It fully sucked, and neither of us were able to sleep. Towards dawn, we heard loud thrashing in the bushes. Not knowing what it was, we decided to stay very still. The noises got closer, and we heard something rustling around in our gear. Really terrified, I poked my head out of the sack and came face to face with an Indonesian man less than a meter away. We both screamed, and he took off. My friend and I both got out of our sacks and we were surrounded by about a dozen soldiers. One of them spoke some broken English and we learned they were on a training hike. We never learned why they were rummaging through our gear, but they pretty much got on their way and we were fine. It obviously could have gone very south very quickly, but it was all good in the end. I never left late on a long hike again. Edit. Turns out we were about 400 meters short of the hut. Our first camping trip last year ended up being during a snow slash sleet slash lightning storm. I've had my tent for several years at that point and this was the first time it was truly weather tested. I didn't sleep well at all for all the flashing and thrashing the forest was doing. I've never slept through a storm that bad before while camping. My poor dog was scared, and shivering so bad I had to put him in the car to sleep. I dashed out to the truck between the insane flashes of light illuminating the entire forest for several seconds at a time, and made him a little nest. I saw that hail was piled up several inches up the side of the tent, as well as water forming under the soil and leaves, and rolling down the slope we were on, making my concerns even greater. Thank goodness we were on the high ground, on a small flattened area barely large enough for my tent footprint. Finally fell asleep in the early morning hours as the storm passed. Had dreams my tent and air mattress floated down the mountain. Woke up to sunshine, small rivers carved all around our sight. Small flood mounds of debris, the brightest freshest, most glorious smelling earth, and a freaking dead man's tree limb right above our tent. I learned many lessons on that trip. Next time, I will sleep in the truck with the dog.
This was the mid-1990s at a French and Indian War reenactment at a fort surrounded by forest. The French and English regulars had nice army tents and fancy camp rows and everything but we who did colonial militia camp just inside the woods and rather than uniforms we were dressed in a combination of colonial civilian wear and eastern Native American stuff. Fur trappers and traders and stuff. No bright clothes. We blended into the woods pretty good dot well the same weekend as the reenactment on the other side of the fort about a quarter mile in the trees from our camp was also a boy scout camp out taking place. And I guess their scout leader had a touch of evil to him. Because they came and asked if we'd sneak into their camp via the woods around 1am and cause a ruckus to scare the heck out of the scouts. So our small unit, only about six or seven guys, duly suit up with all our battle gear and sneak into the camp at the duly appointed time. Met the scoutmaster and he told us to go ahead. So we let out our greatest war whoops and I believe one of two fellows fired their muskets up in the air as well. I'd never seen anyone get the heck out of tents as quick as those scouts did. I was only 18 at the time and thought it hoot but felt bad about it when I matured a bit. When we were 14, three boys and two girls went camping at the base of a mountain. We all got drunk. About two in the morning I went outside to take a piss, it's pitch black, we're all in the tent awake and laughing and joking. I opened the tent and seen a man dressed in black with a balaclava on hiding behind a tree. I focus in on him and starts running across the front of the tent in full view and disappears behind some more trees. I got back in the tent and told everyone what I saw, no one believed me. Then we unzip the tent door and we see him again only this time as comes from behind the tree and walks right up to the tent and stands there not saying a word. The toughest one of our group, tells us to stay in the tent and at 14 years old gets out and walks right up to the guy. Turns out it was a guy a few years older than us who heard our noisy asses and came to check it out. He pulled his balaclava off and I've never been so scared and relieved in my whole life. I don't remember ever lying to parents to go camping again. The guy ended up doing 10 years for armed robbery, and my brave friend got married yesterday to my cousin. I'm so hungover right now. When I was younger I went on a camping trip with my family and a few of my friends. One day. We all went to the beach that was nearby our campsite. One of my dickhole friends ended up leaving the beach early and I would soon find out why. When I came back with the rest of my family, I noticed that our tent was zipped open, despite us leaving it closed when we left. I'm pretty sure one of my parents went in to make sure nothing snuck in there. They ran out of the tent screaming saying that there was a snake in the tent, which makes everyone else start screaming. My friend ends up going in the tent, grabbing the snake and throws it in our direction, smiling. The snake was fake and goddamn did he get us good. He left the beach early just to plant a fake snake he brought all the way from home in our tent. A few years ago I was solo camping in the northern Arizona wilderness. I practiced pretty good camping habits, so my food waste was buried far away from my tent, the actual trash was suspended in a tree for later retrieval. Anyway, around 2 am or so, I had a bear come to my campsite and sniff slash hang around for a while. I'm not sure what made it decide to get near the smells of a human slash fire embers. He or she sniffed my tent, gave it a few nose pokes and eventually moved on. The whole time I was trying to remain quiet, but holding my handgun and light ready to fight. I knew the gun I had was insufficient for a bear, but better than nothing. I now own a handgun specifically for this type of camping that theoretically gives me a chance against a bear. So this was my first time camping and I was actually pretty excited nothing strange happened till everyone got settled into the tent for the night. 
About two hours later I get woken up by something gently scratching the side of the tent outside on the side I'm laying on keep in mind we had done research about the area and there aren't any predators in the area at that time of year and there weren't any trees or plants near that could have caused it. The scratching continued for a few minutes and I swear I smelled something like rotten meat, but when we got up in the morning and looked around the tent there were no tracks or meat or anything we never found out what was scratching the tent and something tells me it wasn't a friendly little animal. We were all about to sleep when suddenly I feel a weird moving lump under my tent. I panic and wake up my mom who when waking up noticed there were many lumps under our tent. Then we began noticing the croaking noises were coming from under our tent. Following that we hear my other camp mates screaming and their moms comforting them. We go outside and realize it's a literal frog infestation. Frogs everywhere under the tents, on the tables, on the grass absolutely everywhere. FSR they were following the light and it just happened to be from our tents and the big light on the tree outside our tent. One of the teachers had to close all the lights and open one portable light and Peter Piper her way to attracting all the frogs away. It was dark and I felt frogs jumping around me so as a kid in third grade I was absolutely terrified. Me and the moms and kids in the camp despise frogs to this day. Me and my friends got chased out of our campsite by somebody. We were camping near a reservoir by some farmlands for a couple nights during the summer of 2020. It was real late at night and everyone was planning to go to bed so we could get up early in the morning and explore some of the areas nearby. I left my tent of three friends to go out and take a piss by the dirt road leading to our site. As soon as I'm unzipping my fly I hear what I think is someone running at me from the other side of the road. I freak out and bolt back to our tent almost tripping over one of my friend's heads as I let myself back in. I claim someone tried to run at me and all my other friends freak out. We had some other friends in a different tent a bit away, and we figured we would all rush out of the tent, warn the other dudes, and then make a break for the car. As soon as we busted out of our tent and screamed for the other dudes to get out and run, one of my friends recalls that as he was running out and looking back, he swore there was someone else near our tent and that they were started to head over to theirs. As we all managed to pile into our cars and start to book it, leaving our tents and other stuff behind, one of my friends almost gets pulled out of the car as he's slamming the door shut. We drove over to one of the closest towns to the campsite and spent the night in a church parking lot. I was unable to sleep because in my total panic I had left my wallet in my tent and I had a good amount of cash in it. As soon as the sun had started to rise we all decided to head back and see if anyone was still there. Although none of the camp was even touched we managed to find fresh footprints near our tents that led out to the reservoir. To this day we're still confused as to why whoever it was chased us out and why even if they did, they never bothered to do anything with our belongings. Maybe it was just a bored farmer trying to scare out of some teens? I'm still not exactly sure. This didn't happen to me but to my friend who is an experienced outdoorsman and trustworthy, rational person not known for BS whatsoever. He told me he was camping in the back country of Montana with a group of friends. Think remote Alpine Lake, many miles into the wilderness. If you've been in wilderness like this you know how spectacular the night sky is. Anyway, they're all sitting around the campfire chatting and having a good time. Presumably drinking some beer. He and a few others call it a night and head to their tents. A couple of people decide to stay up a bit longer at the campfire. Some time passes and he's awoken by a very loud sound, what he described to me as like a, metallic, whirring noise. He told me this story like 10 years ago, I wish I could remember details better and tell you what that means even. It's going on for a few minutes and he's pretty annoyed. Thinking it's drunk people by the campfire playing speakers, he pokes his head out of the tent to tell them to knock it off. 
The people at the campfire are mesmerized by the sky. There is a spectacular light show, bright objects whizzing around quickly in a way that defies what we all know about physics and the night sky. Again, this story is fuzzy in my brain so I wish I had more details for you about exactly what he saw. I can't remember if he described objects or if it was just lights moving in the sky, accompanied by this very loud noise still. Everyone is understandably freaked out and they are deep into the wilderness. Nobody around. No cell service. It's dark and there's no hiking out. So they go back to their tents to hold down for the night. One of the girls he's camping with is so terrified she wraps her hair around her ears, kind of Princess Leia style, and stuffs her hair into her ears to try to block the noise. She's kind of rocking back and forth and my friend hugs her tightly through the whole night to comfort her. At some point it stops, morning comes, and they all hike out, that's the story. I wasn't there so can't confirm any details. Again, my friend is a rational human, not prone to BS or the supernatural or any of that. He's a well-respected community member, actually owns a small business in town etc. This story was relayed to me a long time ago so I wish I was more clear on some of the details. But I do believe him. I was camping with some high school friends back in the 80s. We were about 6 miles down a newly built dirt logging road in some deep and previously unexplored forest. We built a campfire and some of us were drinking pretty heavily, so one of the guys got out a tape recorder to embarrass us with later. Sometime after midnight our revelry was interrupted by the loudest, scariest bass toned roar we'd ever heard. None of us have ever heard anything like it to this day. It was louder and deeper than any black bear roar, and there were almost no bears around here than anyhow. Only our teenage bravado and the advanced state of drunkenness of some of us kept us from leaving in fright. But we did put out our campfire and stay in our cars that night. The kicker is, this roar was caught on the tape. You could tell from the echo it was a sound clearly from a distance, but was still so loud it caused the recording to distort. Truly frightening. Sadly, the tape was lost long ago. Not too long after that we started hearing stories of people encountering Bigfoot on the local section of the Appalachian Trail. I have no idea if that was Bigfoot we heard, and I'm very skeptical about anything like that, but I'm sure it was no bear we heard. When I was about 13, my best friend and I thought it would be a good idea to camp in her back garden. We'd done it a couple of times before and it was fine. It was well after midnight, we were just eating snacks and chatting quietly, when we hear that ominous sound of twigs snapping in otherwise silent surroundings. We both looked at one another and fell silent, it all felt too quiet. We waited a minute, then started whispering again, sure enough we heard the snapping slash rustling sound again, then something hit the tent. This time we didn't wait around, we fully screamed and legged it out of the tent and towards her house. As we were running, we hear laughter from behind us. Her older brother and a couple of his mates thought it would be funny to sneak up on us. The relief was almost instant, but that initial fear was horrible. When I was 15, the summer camp I was at was meant to be instructor training one. So, the first training task was to make a makeshift shelter, have it okayed by the instructors and then spend the night sleeping there alone, while being told that if anything makes us uncomfortable, we were to return to the camp ASAP. So, I went to this particular hill about 10 minutes from the camp that was kind good place for staying there overnight. There used to be rumors about Satanists going there time to time, and a year before this happened, there was actually a hole dug on the top that actually looked like a grave to a bunch of teenagers majority of us were, and a bunch of bracelets had been found there, too. 
But no one ever saw anything suspicious with their own eyes, and there never were anything that would stop us from going there, too. So I was like, who the hell cares? The worst that could happen is that the folks who were supposed to have their meetings there will wake me up and tell me to leave. I was always taught that there is one main rule for sleeping in the forest alone. Go to sleep when there is still light, so I did just that. Fell asleep fairly quickly, too. And then it happened. I woke up about two hours later, all my senses running at the top speed, my heart beating wildly, everything in me screaming. I haven't seen anyone there, but the whole sense of go 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 made me pack all my belonging in record time, and I ran from the hill as if all the devils were behind me, well, maybe they were. I have no idea how I managed to rush down the hill to the path down without having a light on and without hitting any of the trees that grew there. All I know is that I stopped only when I stood in the middle of the summer camp place, and to this day I have no idea what woke me up and sent me running. There was a bear in our camp once. Another time, there was a murderer who had escaped in the same forest we were in we didn't know until morning. It turned out he was a couple miles from us though. Another time while hunting, there was a group of cows that came and licked the fire pit, while it was still hot. Finally, not me, but my father, had to run away from a fire. He had to run and it had cut off his initial escape, forcing him to go to plan D. He ended up getting picked up by a fire squad, but he ran constantly for several hours. The campsite was destroyed and about $15,000 in gear went up in smoke. Insurance refused to cover anything that was lost, citing that they knew there was a fire in the area, and therefore the plan didn't cover it. However, it was initially 85% contained and over 15 miles away, so land management, I don't know which agency it was specifically, said it was safe. So I was probably like 8 this is a pretty short sentence but we were camping it was late at night I think and I went up to Rose Hill where tree was the top of it and I chilled up there for a while then I was coming down from the hill and I was walking back to the tent and as I turn around and I see this humanoid figure slowly chasing me. And I never ran so fast before to the tent and I went in the tent and I never came out to until everyone is awake. Back I think when I was 12 when I was camping with my brother and grandparents they were in a camper and me and my brother had our own tent so fast forward a couple of hours I'm still trying to get to sleep and out of the sudden I hear bug screen zipper opening, and I say who is that? And it stops so I sort of assume it was my brother trying to prank me or something, but it didn't really seem like something he'd do. Anyway after a little it happened but I noticed I couldn't see any shadow in front of it. So it's like 3 AM, my heart's beating super fast I'm freaking out, then my mind thinks what there's a siren killer? And it keeps happening on and off for about 10 minutes and then I saw a figure of a June bug then it hit me there was no zipper unzipping, just a June bug flying into my tent, but I swear it sounded like a zipper. Moments like these have happened to me a lot. I guess if I had a theme song, it would be paranoid. My family of six we were camping out in the woods and we were roasting marshmallows. Then we heard a twig snap and then we look in the direction where we heard the twig snap. We saw two orange eyes in the darkness just staring at us. We were basically crapping our pants. We sat there for 30 seconds then the eyes got closer to us and it was three foxes just standing there. After a couple of seconds of them standing there my older brother got up and threw some of our snacks we had brought with us in an opposite direction. Three foxes went running into the snacks my brother threw. We started packing up our tents and etc. We got out of there before the foxes came back for more. One time it was my birthday and I decided for my birthday party I was going to go, glamping, 
which is camping but we made it fancy. We had a chandelier in the tent and a soft fuzzy rug. Anyways we decided to go on a walk after we'd finished setting up. They had trails that were wood, and they were at least two or three feet above the ground. So we were walking down the trail and I saw a river down the trail with a dock on it. My mom and sister stayed back while I ran to it. The water was filled with mud. The color was light but dark. It's hard to explain. But I was looking out at the water, but then I looked down. I will always have the image in my head. My first thought was that it was a huge canteen. But after staring at it, and watching the water move it as it was hooked to the deck, I realized what it was. It was a corpse of a man. I could see his hair moving, his face thankfully in the water, and his back showing. He was all muddy so there was no color. I had to sit there on the trail and wait for the police. I was scared because I didn't know if someone murdered him and was hiding under the trail. Turns out he was a 40-year-old man who went kayaking when a storm hit and he drowned. The sad part is no one claimed him. I and some of my friends took our kids camping in the White Mountains. I told my friend's husband to take the trash to the dumpster by the entrance to the campground but they decided it was nobody. Woke up later that night to scratching on the side of my tent and something brushing up against it. Scared me. I'm a very small female and I am terrified of the woods at night and I am alone with my seven-year-old son. All I could picture was some creepy humid figure crouched, gently dragging at razor-sharp nails over my tent. In reality it was tiny little coon hands which is actually pretty cute. Woke up in the morning and it was clear that a raccoons had been all up in our campsite. Apparently the raccoon had been poking my friend's son through the side of the tent. This is now something we do a few times in year and my friend's husband makes a habit of bringing the trash to the dumpster before bed like I had originally suggested. But what do I know? I went camping in a pretty remote area in California four or five years ago. I was in a hammock on the edge of a lake, and it was one of the best trips I've ever done. Until I woke up the second morning and found a bare footprint in the mud not 50 feet from my hammock. So last summer, we're all sitting around the fire. It's late. We're mellow and enjoying the evening, nice time being had by all. All of a sudden, one guy stands up with a look of horror on his face and says, What is that? What the F is that? A big line of lights were going up in the sky. The lights were in a perfectly straight line and they were perfectly spaced out. Everyone had a moment of wondering if Russia or China or someone decided to bomb us before one guy went, wait. Starlink. So yeah, just Bezos doing Bezos stuff, but we got the crap scared out of us for a minute. I used to run a Cub Scout pack years ago and one weekend we were camping at a Scout Association campsite. At about 2 AM on the Saturday morning I was woken by one of the boys screaming. It was really loud, really terrified screaming. I crashed out of my tent and as I ran to where the boys tent were, a row of dome tents with four boys in each, the screaming stopped. I was looking for a tiger or something dragging a cub scout out and devouring him, not that we get tigers in southeast London, the screaming had been that terrible. But there was just silence. No other kids had woken up, but I'd been joined by the other two leaders, equally worried and mystified. I couldn't believe that the other boys hadn't woken up or that there wasn't anyone crying. Just silence. We still had the same number of boys in the morning. It didn't happen again and we never did find out who it was or what was up. Edit. Just to clear up any confusion. It was definitely a human voice, not an animal, 
as the boy screamed various word including mummy just before going quiet. And there are no bobcats, mountain lions, cougars, bears or anything scarier than a fox in southeast London. I was in my sleeping bag trying to sleep and heard the sound of heavy footsteps coming toward me so I turned on my flashlight and saw nothing. I settled back down and the footsteps started up again and when they were about 20 feet away I turned on the flashlight and saw nothing. So I got my revolver out of my pack and waited, they started up again, the crunching sound and the leaves coming straight for me, crunch, crunch, and when it was about 5 feet away I turned my light on again and found myself facing down with a .38 a tiny little toad that was trying to reach the stream I was camping near. The sound was it hopping through the leaves. In the 90s, before everyone had cell phones, my Girl Scout troop was camping in a state park when a terrible storm came through the area with major flood warnings. The rangers at the park frantically came through every campsite and evacuated everyone to higher ground. Everyone, that is, except us and the Boy Scouts in the site next to us. We went to bed with light rain, but woke in the middle of the night to our tents collapsing from the driving rain and the water quickly rising. The Boy Scouts, they were 12 to 16 years old, we were 7 to 9 years old, helped us quickly pack our site into our cars. Unfortunately the roads were too dangerous to drive on, because we couldn't see how deep the water was. And we didn't know if any sections of the road had washed out. We abandoned all the vehicles and used the map that the scout leaders had to find someplace that wouldn't be flooded. A few miles away there were treehouse cabins that were built around a tree, and lofted 15 feet in the air. It was decided that we needed to move quickly, and that was our best shot. The older boys and the adults carried the smallest girls when it became clear that the wind was preventing them from staying on their feet. The wind and rain soaked everyone through to the skin. We made it to the cabins, and the adults broke in and raided the emergency supplies there for space blankets. There was no way to build a fire because there was no firewood. It had been an especially dry year and starting campfires was forbidden due to risk of starting a forest fire. I remember shivering for hours, all of us girls in the middle of a huddle on the floor with the boys on the outside trying their best to keep us warm. One of the boys asked us if we knew any Girl Scout songs, either camp songs are more of a Girl Scout thing than a Boy Scout thing, or they were just humoring us. We sang every song we knew and the leaders taught us a few more that they had learned. At some point we convinced the boys to sing in rounds with us. Morning came, the rain slowed down to a light drizzle, and a ranger showed up assessing damage to the park. He discovered us, and immediately drove to get help. They returned with a bunch of trucks and all-terrain vehicles, and drove us to a location where doctors were on site to evaluate us. It was sheer luck that none of us had anything worse than the chills. It could have gone worse than it did, and we were unbelievably lucky to have survived it all. We could have easily died in our sleep if the flood had come through all at once instead of slowly rising. If the Boy Scouts hadn't been there, then us small girls could not have made the hike to safety. If we had tried to drive, we would have been washed away. Two years ago while I was tree planting out of a bush camp in Saskatchewan. It was the second last night of our season, a few of us had been up really late drinking around the fire. After everyone else had gone to bed I went to my tent to grab another beer before putting out the fire. As I'm getting back out of my tent I see something running through the center of the camp that definitely not one of the dogs. I duck back inside my tent to grab a flashlight and as I stand back uh, there's a black bear staring right at me, no farther than 5 feet away. I run back to the fire and wait for the bear to make a move. Luckily, he decides not to follow me. 
A few minutes later I hear the bear trying to get inside our garbage box. I head over cautiously, without a flashlight, like a horror movie character, but I can't see the bear anywhere in the nearly pitch black. I get right next to the box, still no sign of the bear, and try to shift the lid back into place. It isn't until the bear turns his head and I see his eyes that I realize that my hand is inches away from his back paw. Both of us, frozen in fear, stared at each other for what felt like minutes, but was more likely seconds. This was possibly the most incredible moment I've ever shared with an animal. I could see the intelligence this bear's eyes, I could see him sizing up the situation exactly the way I was. I felt a strong connection, and ultimately an understanding as fellow mammals. After this long moment, I shouted and he ran away. I stayed up until about 5 am, scaring him away every half hour or so, before waking up at 7 for the last day of our season. Edit, had an incredible, midnight stare down with a black bear. Gained a greater appreciation for our place among animals. long one here. But please stick with me. Last year a friend and I went on a long road trip to New Mexico. We camped most of the way, and our first night we got to camp we spent in the Jefferson National Forest at a campsite in West Virginia. We had found some pamphlets for campsites at a gas station and we drove out to a place called White Rocks Campground, which was like a 25 plus mile drive up a dirt road into the mountains. We were in the boonies. On our way in we saw no cars except for one truck that was behind us for maybe 15 minutes, but then turned down another road. We passed a huge coal factory with a sign that had said 62 days since an on-site incident. The only people we saw on our drive were standing on the side of the dirt road, huddled around a plastic bin that was on fire. It was all so odd. But we were so excited about camping and being on this trip, we were just laughing about how weird it was instead of not being worried about having A, no cell phone reception or B, being so deep into the mountains. We finally get to the campground and it is completely empty. Not a single car or person to be seen, and this campground had about 30 sites. We drove around all them trying to spot anyone. But when we realized it was just us we picked a random site and decided to just stick it out. We got out of the car and stood there and just listened. The silence was startling. I love being in the woods, I've never felt scared or intimidated to be out there, but there was such a different feeling this time. There were no bird sounds, it was just thick, silent woods. This was straight up Blair Witch. It was getting dark quick and we decided to start a fire and put up the tent to try to get comfortable. My friend was in charge of the tent and I was putting together the fire. While we were trying to go about our business, we would both stop and listen. My friend even made the point that if anyone was to approach us, at least there were crunchy leaves everywhere for us to hear it coming. See where this might be going? I thought we were just freaking ourselves out but it really felt like someone was watching us. It was the first time in my life I've understood what that feeling is. I had goosebumps, I wanted to leave, but I kept my cool for my friend, turned out she was also internally freaking out, but trying to keep it cool as well. Finally the fire is started, tent is up and sleeping bags ready and the sun had completely set. Sitting around the fire together, the darkness seemed to close in so close to us that it felt suffocating. My friend brought out a book to read aloud and make us feel more comfortable. While she was reading, I grabbed my headlamp and would occasionally turn it on and look around me. I had had the feeling since we pulled into the campsite, that someone was out there in those woods. It was pitch black, and our fire was a beacon. My friend and I decided FIT let's go to bed. We'll just go to sleep quick, then pack up in the morning and GTFO was our thought process. We put out the fire, and I decided to grab the one knife we had on us that was still in the car, and keep it beside me in the tent. 
After getting into our sleeping bags, my friend pulls out her cell phone to see if she had any cell reception. Nothing still. She tried to dial her boyfriend just in case, and I remember saying out loud we have no reception out here, it won't work. We laid there in silence watching her phone trying to dial out, but it disconnected. And if that was not the perfect cue, suddenly about maybe 20 feet off to the left of our tent, there were footsteps. These weren't footsteps that quietly built up, these were footsteps like someone had been standing behind the tree near our tent and started walking towards us. Those crunchy leaves were doing their job. We froze. Just stared at each other, eyes wide. The footsteps continued to walk towards the tent, then turned to go behind for maybe a couple yards and then they stopped. Silence again. These were heavy booted footsteps, with the same pattern that would be a person walking, not a bear or a deer. My friend grabbed my knife that was laying by my bag and grabbed her headlamp. She unzips the tent and gets out and stands in front of the tent, knife out, looking around the area. She's a goddamn warrior. It was maybe 45 seconds of silence as we listened for more footsteps or voices. I could see the light from my friend's headlamp dashing around the trees, but there was nothing there. She stuck her head back in the tent and said we're getting the out of here and then we in record time packed up everything of ours in probably 10 minutes and flew out of there. I'm amazed thinking back on it, how we didn't loose our heads, we kept our cool while packing, but still internally screaming in terror. We only had our headlamps on. And the whole time we were packing up I kept thinking how the hill people would grab us and pull us into the darkness, and we were completely helpless if they did. It didn't feel like it was really happening, maybe that's why we were almost completely calm while packing. Like there's no way this is actually happening on our first night camping, we must just be freaking ourselves out. I still felt like we were being watched, but we sped out of there once done. Now here is where the hill people hunting us was confirmed. As we pulled out of the campsite, there were two black dirty trucks pulled off to the side of the road, hidden in the trees almost but still clearly visible. They had definitely not been there when we pulled in earlier, and the closest residential homes were maybe 15 miles away. We didn't see anyone around them but we didn't stop to look. We got to a motel and stayed a night there and told the story to the motel owner, who was amazingly sweet and comforting and even gave us some cash even when we left that next morning for us to use for another motel if we needed. I promised that man I would give him a good review. I will remember every detail of that night for the rest of my life. The feeling like we were being watched, hearing the footsteps so close to us suddenly, the black trucks, if anyone out there is a good writer I would love to have someone put this in writing for me, because I'm a terrible writer, and this post itself is probably god-awful. Edit. Went camping in the deep West Virginia mountains, felt like being we were being watched and heard footsteps outside our tent and saw trucks by our campsite after we packed our stuff up to get the F out of there. Don't go to White Rocks Campground. was working in a summer camp and one day when we were on minimal staff I happened to be the person in camp. Cell phone reception was terrible up in the mountains so I had gone to one of the cabins to use a landline and chat after work. Heading back to my cabin at the end of twilight, I get to the flagpole and there's a large black bear. It's heading past the swimming pool making a beeline for the dumpster. I stop in my tracks, thinking oh crap. A bear. Bear stops and looks at me. Could swear it was thinking oh crap. A human. So the two of us face off for a few seconds. Either my flashlight made its eyes sting or the bear realized my scent was all over the place. It made a right turn and ambled up the slope into the wilderness. That bear still returned on a regular basis to tip over the dumpster in hopes of getting a snack which never succeeded because we used bear bars. 
So each morning one of the chores was to lift up the dumpster and see where the tracks had come from. This scared the kids. I ended up with the most badass reputation in camp because every little kid soon found out that I had faced the bear alone. No kid talked back at me. The one occasion when one tried another kid stopped it by exclaiming that's the bear lady. Can't say I was sorry that reputation happened. Discipline was easier. Especially when people noticed that when I changed cabins the bear changed its route through the camp to avoid me. After it retreated once its instinct thought of me as dominant so it didn't want another conflict. All because I had stood there like an idiot holding a flashlight at a bear. Better decision than flying into a panic, as things turned out. Some buddies and I went camping by the lake one night. About 1. 30 am, we heard some rustling in the bushes and just figured it was a rabbit or something. Went over to check it out, found nothing. About 1. 35 am, a huge pickup truck that was lifted and blaring loud music drove by, on a dirt road, really, really slowly, shining a huge police grade spotlight on me and my friends. The truck burned out and kept driving. So my best friend and I decide to drive up the road and see if we spot anything unusual about the truck. We get to the main road, and there are probably seven or eight cop cars, lights flashing, and two or three ambulances. We stop to turn around and, I swear, like a damn horror film, a cop pecks on my window with his flashlight out of nowhere. He asks what we're doing. We told him we were camping and told him about the truck. He says, well, you boys might want to camp somewhere else. We had a homicide here and haven't located the suspect. Friend says, so should we be scared? Like a damn idiot. And the cop says, and I quote, well, I'm not scared, but there are 20 officers here and we all have guns. I said, yes, sir. And tore off back down to the campsite. Best friend called the rest of our buddies and told them to pack up the gear, not to ask questions, and that we had to get out. We literally threw two fully pitched tents in the back of one of our trucks and got the hell out of there. The cops located the killer about 30 minutes later, at our campsite. Edit. Heard rustling in the bushes while camping on the lake shore in the middle of nowhere. Turns out it was the guy who had just committed a triple homicide two miles up the road. I was lucky enough to be able to camp on a Civil War battlefield in Gettysburg where there was field hospital and a mass burial site. I do reenactments during a full moon. I stayed awake the whole night and was joined by half the dam armies. There was a mist that hovered in the woods just out of reach. Someone came through our camp, only it was nobody. There was yelling at about 3 AM, but all the camps were dark. Because I'm a spooky bitch, I pulled a tarot spread. Death, the hanged man, and justice all reversed. Best trip ever. I was 16 camping on the South Downs in the UK with a bunch of friends, 10 guys, in an area of woods we went to a lot and definitely knew our way around. At around 1am I decide to go on a walk through the woods with two other friends. We only had the torches on our phones to use. But that night the moon was so bright we basically had the pathway half lit the entire walk. We were in single file walk-in and nobody had a torch on or was talking. Pretty much moving silently as a three when we notice a group of people sat around a fire with big tents. We were very close to them when we realized they were there. A bush was covering us from being seen as we were the ones mainly in the dark. This might have been a bit messed up to do but through a mix of hand signals and quiet talking we decide to mess with this group of campers. This consisted of my one friend, who could produce a deep voice, howling something along the lines of come here. 
This was very loud as the sound of bugs in England at night aren't very loud and there is no road around for a while. Almost instantly after he had finished his howl I began screaming as high and as petrified as possible for maybe two seconds. And we all slipped away back to our camp just using the moonlight. Didn't wait around for any reaction or response but went away with the satisfaction of scaring the crap out of some people. Hope they write their side somewhere. Would be funny to see what theories they came up with as to what it was. I was in third grade staying in a small cabin with my family. My parents slept in one room with my younger brother in their bed and my older sister in a sleeping bag on the floor. I slept on a couch that pulled out to a bed with my best friend Colin they let me bring with us. We stayed up very late playing Game Boy I had fallen asleep when it was his turn this at about 3 AM. He woke me up by nudging me as I woke as I asked him what he wanted. He shushed me as he pointed out the window above the couch we were sleeping on. Outside the window we saw a swing set that was definitely taller than my 5 apostrophe 10 dad. Towering over the swing set was this hairy shadowy figure. It was very dark we were deep in the redwoods with no outside light other than the moon. The cabin we were staying in was in a bit of a clearing so it wasn't quite as dark as the forest. I was frozen in shock. I had heard many stories of Bigfoot but never thought it was real or that I would see one. The area was known for sightings and they sold many souvenirs related. After staring at the creature for approximately 60 seconds, that felt like eternity, I could see its eyes looking back at us. It then walked downhill into the trees with long strides we both confirmed with each other that we weren't dreaming and that it was a positively amazing spectacle. We were both excited at this point not scared. We must have both been exhausted from hiking all day and staying up late because we went to bed shortly after. The next morning we told my parents. They of course didn't believe us and said it was a nice story. We joked about how we both saw Bigfoot for years. Red River Gorge, Kentucky was hiking along the peak of one of the hills. There's an access road but a ways off of it well into the trees there was a site with a bunch of old appliances and car parts from the 50s scattered about. Ovens, a truck, dishwashers, microwaves, all sorts. There was no clear way it could have gotten there. Like I said, there was a maintenance access road a couple of miles away but we were well into the trees off the trail a ways. And the trail we were on wasn't very wide, well worn or clear to begin with. Maybe they dumped that stuff before those particular trees were there and it may have been easier to access at some point but it was still awfully out of place. Well I was 9 year old kid and it was dark and I was with my bro and my mom's friend kids. We was looking for a dog that gone missing so I end up pat sheep. And when I was looking for them I didn't see anyone there I started panic. And then I started hearing footsteps and I got scared and I think I saw something. My dad found me in there. I told my dad that I didn't know where they are and my dad told me to get on car. We found them and in that time I got to know what is Slenderman pus what was creepypasta. Not experienced, and not necessarily in the woods, but this is worth sharing. Some friends and I went camping in Borrego Springs a couple weeks back. We took a hike to this oasis, we were in the middle of the desert, that was about 4.5 miles away two hours before sunset. Needless to say, it was dark when we began our journey back. We really thought we could make it while the sun was out, but the heat must have clouded our judgment. It was pitch black outside, we could only illuminate our path with our spotty iPhone flashlights. We were out of water, delirious. After an hour of walking, 
I couldn't even tell if we were on the path anymore. Eventually, the sight of a dried water bed started materializing beneath my shivering legs. We decided to take a minute to catch our breath. Over the dark horizon, not longer than 200 yards, a man-like figure stood somewhere on the side of a nearby mountain. It looked completely human, with long legs and arms that stretched out to his legs. While the figure was doused in this eerily intimidating blackness, its movements were clear to me and burned in my mind. It wasn't until after I could process what it was that I told my friends to look up at it. It took them a while to find it, but when their eyes saw the shadow like man, it was obvious they were shaken by it. Nobody really said anything, or at least anything that I can recall. We more or less stared pointlessly at this creature. Maybe we were hoping it to do something, or maybe we were just so terrified that our brains practically froze in awe of this anomaly. The next thing I remember was us walking back, quick. We weren't looking diligently for rocks or other hazards on the floor anymore. No, we were really just trying to get to our campsite as quick as possible. Almost like stupid college kids in a horror movie, the group became separated in our escape. In the blink of an eye, I was alone with only one of my friends, I'll call him M. We stopped for a moment to catch our breath. At this point, we realized that we weren't lost anymore. A dim light from a lamppost shined just nearly in view. Consequently, we didn't hesitate to move towards this light. Then came the scariest moment of my life. A loud shout came from behind us. It wasn't a scared sort of shout, it was a violent, angry shout. It was definitely a masculine voice. While it sounded more like an echo, we were too afraid to see behind us if it were far, or close, to us. We ran like hell and made it to the light, which helped us navigate to our campsite. There, we found the rest of our group by the campfire, talking to those who stayed back about the trip. It seemed to be the topic of discussion for the night. We joked about it, teased each other, even made up crazy theories of what that figure could have been. But I know it was human. They know it was human. It's that feeling, that gut. Primal feeling that something is wrong. We don't talk about it much anymore. I believe my friends don't really think much of it. But ever since then, I've had the feeling that something is watching me. And it won't go away. I'll hear a door slam in my empty house, a violent shake of my bed when I'm alone, even my coffee machine flopping to the floor with no force pushing against it. I think I'm being watched by whatever that is, but what do I know? I really hope I am just crazy. That would be a blessing. I was hiking across Newfoundland. Found an abandoned town, mostly small cottages slash trailers with collapsed roof sect. Light was fading so I decided to make camp in a clearing without a house, cause they gave me the creeps. That night I was awoken by a noise outside my tent. Figured it was a curious coyote or something. But then something touched my tent and ran along it to the front. That's when I realized someone was standing outside of tent, at night, in the middle of a ghost town in the wilderness. I slowly grabbed my knife and sat up very still. My plan was that if he tried to open the door I would surprise him by stabbing out at him and asking questions later. The guy didn't try to get in though, not sure if he heard me move or what but he walked off. Once I was no longer able to hear footsteps for a while I packed up all my crap, slowly crawled out of the tent, looked around to make sure the coast was clear and then packed up my tent as quickly as possible and shoved it in my bag. Then I just started running down the trail and didn't stop moving until it was daytime again. Maybe the dude was just curious, I'll never know the intent but it creeps me out. He was likely watching me come down the trail from one of the abandoned houses when I first came into town.
I don't know if it's unexplainable but a few weeks ago we spent a weekend in some touristic cabins. The place is cold enough to need a chimney but not too cold to snow. The nearest village is about 40 minutes walking and there's no telephone sign. The thing is that me, my family and our dog were having a wood fire and about 12 am my mom went to sleep with the dog and me. My brother and father decided to go for a walk so we asked to the cabin's manager to recommend us a safe walking path for the night. After that we were going to the place when we found a place that seemed like an old excavation place. We thought that because we found a lot of obsidian there were a lot of marks in the place. We stopped there for a while and at some point a very particular bird started to sing. After all the thing happened we asked the cabin's keeper and he told us that there weren't any birds that sing in that way. Especially at night. At the beginning we didn't notice but at some point the singing started to be louder and faster and the suddenly a donkey started crying that freaked out my father and brother and they started running to the cabin but I was more interested in continuing with the walk. I'm usually skeptical to superstition and paranormal stuff so I wanted to know why that donkey cried. And after a minutes of arguing with my companions we saw some bushes moving at the top of a wall and at the same time some rocks fall from the rock wall. This freaked all of us out and we decided to turn back. I tried to explain this by thinking that someone was there. Especially because our dog was a bit freak out of the cabin's keeper and good companions. But I guess everything is possible. We went exploring through old abandoned silver mines one time and one of us saw a bear. He screamed and we all went running out and trampling over each other. The guy who saw the bear said its head was dancing up and down like it was about to attack. But the bear never came out. After some conversation we are pretty sure he only saw the dark shadow that flashlights create when shining on a wall. But who knows? Maybe we almost became bear food. I live in the deep woods far away from civilization so bears are a yearly thing because of our apple tree. It's always a bit odd to see great big feet in your headlights running across the road before seeing the bear. Mountain lion running down the freeway with skunk bigger than him. Tweakers out stealing chainsaws and wood from people's yards. Old mining sites with mini cemeteries near them on the side of a hill. Down a tiny dirt road in the middle of nowhere. The Starnges though. He he's. Or devils slash demons at work. I work for an Indian tribe in the mountains and was asked if I'm okay with spirits and ghosts. Shadows and voices calling your name. Turning equipment on and closing or opening doors. Seeing people outside walking up the walkway and suddenly they're not there. Things fly off shelves and move across rooms. It's just part of the daily routine. Strangest and most terrifying would have to be what I can only assume was a delirious hallucination. I've been told it was a red cap by locals. But I was outside getting something from the car while at someone's house and they live up the hill a bit outside of town. And at night it is dark. The lowest light pollution on this coast kinda dark. Suddenly I hear hooves, tap 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 tap, across the road. I turn to look and the noise stops. It's so dark but I swear I can see something small and short in the road. Smaller than a goat, quite a few people have goats here. I reach for my light but it's not on my center console where I left it. I look in my car and it's right there where it should be, panic searching I must have felt right over it. I can hear it tap 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 across the road as I'm going for my light and into the bushes across the street. I am stupid oftentimes. The type of person to run towards gunshots rather than away. So of course I went looking as soon as I had my flashlight. I never saw anything except the shadow outline of something that looked like a great big head on a little body when it was stopped in the road. Darkness within the dark. Mine wasn't super scary for me, but it was for my friends. We came across some small old buildings. 
seemed like some kind of hut for soldiers or something. It was pitch dark and we couldn't see inside do I pulled out my torch. As I had mine no one else bothered with theirs. I love the dark but my friends don't, so I decided to pull a prank on them. I turned my light down slowly so they didn't notice it as much, and I creeped up behind them. I jumped out of nowhere and scared them so much they ran out of the room screaming, smiley face, I felt so bad about it afterwards, so I later said sorry. While I may have liked the dark, Thid place was kinda creepy to me too and I didn't want to stay long. After we left we walked stayed away from the place and didn't stop until we absolutely had to. The next day we went back during the daylight to see what the place actually was. The inside was still too dark and the return trip gave no new insight. However, it did give me another chance to scare my friends, smiley face, the next day we were back at home, and we've been joking about the day ever since. However, we still have no idea what that building was. This isn't about hiking or in deep woods but my story began on a piece of wooded property. I was and have been living in a haunted house I've experienced some of the scariest things of my life. I reached out for help in an unconventional way. I had not gotten any luck previously in regards what I can say has been very negative experiences. I applied to a popular television show on the Travel Channel. There were thousands of applicants so I figured I would never hear from the producers but what the heck. I was actually called and picked for the show. I was then videoed and cast in an episode. The show is called The Dead Files. The first thing Steve, a retired NY police detective, does is find anything associated with the property that may explain my experiences. Next comes Amy who then does a walkthrough of the house and property I've watched many seasons of this show, so I was excited for their help. Amy will find alternatives for safely living on the property my episode was different she found I need to leave it's a dark and dangerous place. I sold the property only to have to take it back due to the owners going crazy and losing their adult foster care license. They abused their residents who they loved dearly prior to this house. They destroyed my property and went hostile. Coming back to my home has been the worst situation I could ever imagine. I want to move but am way too deep in debt at this time. Nothing good has come from this property. But the scariest situation isn't the voices, or the footsteps, or even the apparitions but one creepy entity who has appeared to me more than once. She looked like an old hag, red eyes, gray unkept should length hair. I heard an old hoarse raspy female voice coming over my baby monitor. It was singing that old nursery rhyme ring around the rosy. My room went ice cold and I was alone at the time besides three elderly residents I had accepted into my home. I had this strange vision just prior to awakening to this voice. I thought it was a dream, I was actually seeing through the eyes of this hag, as she, I, was floating above the bed of Al one of the residents. I could see Al sleeping on his back with his arms folded across his chest, as seen in the coffins of many. As she or I were hovering above his head, he opened his eyes and looked directly into ours. That's when I woke up to the sound of her singing. I was thinking I'm still dreaming. I got up out of bed and slowly walked to Al's room. It's a few rooms away from the room I was in. As I turned the corner and looked I saw Al sleeping on his back with both arms folded across his chest exactly like my dream or was it? I was so scared at this moment. Al was sleeping and there was no sign of this person, dream, unknown evil. I have experienced many unexplained here in my home and found that a landowner had murdered someone on this property then pulling all his teeth then putting dynamite in his mouth. I thought oh I'm just over exaggerating and this was just a dream. I went back to bed feeling foolish. Then the temperature started dropping. I was freezing. Then I heard it. Her voice coming from the monitor. 
I jumped up tore the cord from the wall and emptied the batteries from it. The voice continued singing. I was petrified and so scared. Looking back on this I'm surprised I did what I did. But I actually pulled the covers over my head and sat in the upright position until morning too afraid to move. It sounds ridiculous now. Most everyone who was has now passed away who was associated with this event, even my partner. He died a few months later. My health has been afflicted SND no doctor can say what is wrong. I live in this place and will say I experienced some of the scariest events of my life. Hoping soon I will be cashed out of this property and get away as quickly as I can. I go camping and hiking solo a lot. I have no problem with wildlife and never felt afraid even when the bears were looking for food in my camp. There were a couple times I was worried. I drove into Kings Canyon in the Sierra Nevadas and there was a lot of inclement weather causing rock falls. I wasn't sure if I had enough gas to get out if I wasted any being slow or getting stuck. Would have been a pain in the butt. My so at the time wanted to go on a long hike up a mountain and back down, 140 kilometers. We didn't wake up super early so time was a factor. If you're in a multi-day slash super long hike you gotta calculate food, water and the pace you go at to make sure you get out in time. Being out on a mountain in the dark is super dangerous, and it was cold enough for hypothermia. My so was a dawdler but promised she would keep a fast pace, even got angry I questioned her. Turns out she walked too damn slow and stopped for pictures every 15 minutes. The last two hours I was jogging slash speed walking, and she complained the whole time. Turn out our last 30 minutes of hiking was in the dark, luckily on a path to the camp. I was so pissed, I went to shower and sleep without saying a word, didn't even eat. I'm not a deep woods hiker, but I do hike. About a year or so ago, me and my wife were walking on this trail in the woods behind her parents' house, and it was a boit 6 p.m., dark but not dark enough to where we had to turn back. As we crested the hill that went into the clearing where we first kissed, we saw a figure standing at the tree line at the edge of the cleaning. I instinctively grabbed my handgun, as these woods were private and I though it could have been a hunter or someone else who wasn't given permission to be there. I called out to the figure, and didn't get a response. I yelled about three times, and then the figure just turned and walked into the brush, as if they never heard me. Without thinking I ran after them, but when I got to the brush, there was nothing. No one, no footprints not a single trace. Ran back to my wife and we got the heck out of there as soon as possible. Later, we looked at the housing records and as it turns out, but in the 50s, a couple guys were hunting and one of them discharged his weapon, and accidentally hit a homeless woman who was staying in the woods, killing her. It could have been her spirit, or it may have actually been a hunter or someone who wasn't allowed to be there. Won't be going back to check though. About a year and a half ago I was at a three-night sleepaway event with my synagogue at this place that was used as a summer camp during the summer. This was around May so they were just letting us use the campground because it wasn't summer yet. The place was huge. There were about 10 different bunks, a barnyard with horses, a pool, a library, an auditorium, that we used for a huge party, and it was all spread out over maybe a mile or two of campground slash forest slash trees. So on the last night of the trip, I found out there was going to be a 12th graders only, I was one, hangout from midnight to 2 a.m. at the library. This wouldn't have been a problem if I were in the senior bunks, but I was staying in the same bunk as my cousin, who was a year lower than me. Which meant we were in a different bunk that was on practically the opposite side of camp from the library. 
And since it was midnight and everyone else was already in their pajamas, nobody wanted to get out of bed to walk with me to the hangout. I considered not going but everyone was telling me how much fun it would be, so I decided to say screw it and walk by myself across the camp in the middle of the night to the library. I put on my phone flashlight and at first it wasn't so bad. There were street lights spread out since it was a dirt road meant for cars and trucks so I wasn't in total darkness. But as I walked I sort of started to psych myself out and think that maybe it wasn't such a good idea to do what I was doing. And then as I walked by the empty soccer field, I heard what sounded like a giggle. And it really jumped and just booked IT the rest of the way across campus and into the library. I don't think I've ever ran that fast in my life. I had one of the teacher's kids give me a ride back to my bunk in his pickup truck cause there was no way I was doing that again to get back to it. Looking back I don't know what it was that I heard but I feel like it might have been a horse or a cow, since there were a lot of those on the property. Or, maybe someone actually was in the soccer field and I heard them giggle. Who knows? I might have been staring at a cougar dead in the face on Thanksgiving weekend and ended up sacrificing my safety and saving two of my other friends that was there. If y'all want the full story then ask so in the comments. I've been asked, so I shall deliver. For background, I live in Canada and was traditionally South African, so we have a group of South Africans that do stuff together like holiday parties. So this was during Thanksgiving. Canadian Thanksgiving, and I was one of four kids my age there, who I will refer to by the following names. HG my best friend, boy and my partner in crime CL my longest friend and a girl and finally Ole friend of CL that she brought with, that I am somewhat friends with. This all happened during the hunting season too, so the larger predators will move down the mountain to eat all the extra stuff the hunters leave behind. On to the story. It was a day before Thanksgiving, and we were camping up in the mountain like we always do. We were sitting in an army tent like we usually do on big trips like this, and we decided we were gonna go chill on this giant boulder that was about five minutes down the road. So the four 14 year olds, me and my friends, walk down to the rock and climb on top, and we are just chilling listening to music with the use of Spotify premium and talking. CL then decided that she had enough and was heading back. So there we are, me, HG and all. I tell HG that the day before I'd seen some cool look in trees on the mints in behind us, and we should go look. So we leave all who wants to sit there for a bit more to go look at the trees. So we climb up to the first one. That was a huge oak and very climbable. However, me and HG decide not to since there's probably a lot of birds and bugs in there. At this point, we were about to start climbing up the rest of the mountain to see the other tree. So I grabbed a stick off a nearby tree that looked like a dagger and pretended to be super dangerous. So me and HG climb up to the other tree, a tall birch tree with no leaves or branches, surrounded by tall yellow grass. Just the log and some spikes and grass up to above my knees, in 511. So we are still listening to music, and we have AirPod Pros in our ears. That's when we hear moving in the yellow grass, so we instantly stand aware and pause the music. HG didn't see it, but I did. I saw something large, and camouflaged moving slowly to the right of us, as if it was stalking us. Now. I am a hunter and have wilderness survival training and knowledge, HG did not. So he was about to turn and run, and I grabbed his arm to stop him, without looking away from the brush. As I grabbed his arm, I felt absolutely nothing. No fear, no adrenaline. All I felt was his fear as he tensed up. At that moment, something went off in my brain and I don't remember the next part too well. So this is HG's version. Apparently, when I grabbed his arm, I said in a very strict tone that scared him into believing me, even though I'm a troll. I apparently said something along the lines of don't run, 
Walk down. Don't turn around. Don't look back. Be quiet. Go get old and get out of here. Don't wait for me. I then let go and let him walk away. I remember turning back to the brush, knees bent, stick in my hand ready to fight off whatever it was. I then risked a look back and saw HG waiting for me, so I waved at him to keep going and gave him a stare that got him going. So when he got about halfway down, I started walking down backwards. I didn't know where whatever it was had gone but I knew that the grass was disturbed by something large that was stealthy and camouflaged with the color yellow. I slowly walked down backwards to the boulder where HG was trying to convince Ol to go, but she thought he was joking. I walked down and went you two get your asses moving to camp right now. Don't run, walk down the hill. When you reach the bottom, book it. So they listened to me and I was still walking down slowly quite a bit behind them. Until I reached the bottom where I threw the stick and ran. I would like to note that I was and still am 14 and I made a couple mistakes like being silent. You're supposed to be very loud for a cougar. I also to this day don't know what it was exactly, but I know that it fit all the right descriptions for a cougar. He later texted me that night and wouldn't stop talking about how I saved his life and how I sacrificed myself for him and could have died. Still don't believe what he said, as he would have done the same as me if he was as aware and trained as I was. Had heard word of a bear in the area up in the woods of Quebec, nothing out of the ordinary, but still something of a threat. A friend and I were enjoying a fire our meal just before bed when we heard a good bit of rustling behind us in the trees. We both stood and shone flashlights out into the thicket and just had two eyes flashing back at us about four feet off the ground or so. Immediately we both look at each other, sure it's a bear. A big one. We stare at it and it just stares back at us until quickly it jostles sideways to the other side of the tree and our light catches it full on the face. It was a raccoon. A common North American raccoon. It had rustled leaves and climbed up the tree as it spotted us. Needless to say we were mighty pissed off at it but it put us on our edge and we ended up putting out the fire and went to go sit by the water to look at the sky a bit better. But even then we were too spooked and went to bed. While I haven't been what would be called deep woods hiking I have had a few creepy experiences in the woods by my house in North Carolina. The scariest would probably have been when I was coming back from a short walk and I got the feeling that something was watching me which I didn't pay any mind to since it's happened before and nothing ever happened. So I kept on walking and suddenly this big ass briar patch just starts to shake and rattle whenever I move so me being the ultimate dumbass who was really trying for that Darwin award decided to go and see what it was and lo and behold it was one of the wild hares that live in the woods around my house and backyard just chilling in the briar patch obviously moving whenever I move cause it's scared. So yeah I got my the crap scared out of me by a tiny little rabbit. Three notable situations I have encountered. Edit. Midnight moose, unknown bear, and a trail built to cause anxiety. For context this is the Canadian Rockies and normally on the Alberta slash BC border. The areas we tend to hike have some of the highest population densities of grizzlies in the entire range so we bring ample protection just in case. The first after a few nights at a lake about a day's hike in and just as the sun finally goes down, I was asleep during the elongated twilight in the valley, I wake to hear excessive grunting and snarling outside my tent. Being in grizzly country and still being quite new to these trips I started to panic. Quietly waking my father next to me we calmly exited the tent. At some point we spooked when ended up being a moose who bolted across the campsite through some thick bush and stopped looking at us, eyes gleaming in the distance in our headlamps as we prepped the bear gun in case of a charge. 
Luckily no such thing occurred and the moose ended up getting lost in the dead end of the valley. The second was in Waterton National Park where we couldn't bring the bear gun which was our last line of defense anyway, we have never needed to use it. We were only staying in the site for a night and planned to leave the next morning to leave the park deeper into the woods. At about 1 am we wake up hearing someone yelling for help. A poor soul finds his way into camp. He was new to backpacking. Inexperienced, missing equipment, and behind schedule. We help him set up camp and settle back and not noticing in the dark that the food bag he set up next to ours was not airtight. The next morning I awake to my father making a lot of noise that I knew had to be bear related. Luckily once I got to the center of camp it was revealed to be a pesky nuisance bear. Overall not a very big black bear who is keeping his distance from us so the worry starts to dissipate as we realize we need break camp sooner than planned. Last I heard the person who hiked in got out no issue after we provided some tips and had to spray the bear as he was getting too comfortable. Unfortunately this year I heard a small black bear in the region had to be put down as it was coming too close to people too often for food. The third was on the same trip and this time not animal related. It was a six day trip which required walking some ridges and even climbing a few mountains with loaded packs. Normal trails can have enough hazards and messing up an ankle 30 kilometers into the backwoods isn't a fun idea. During the longest day and after two previous mountain summits I found myself suddenly walking along the bad side of a ridge on loose terrain around 4 to 8 feet from a drop I couldn't accurately tell the height of. It totally changed what I could be fearful of on these trips. The thought a single misstep could send me tumbling to what was almost guaranteed to be my death didn't leave my mind until we were done with that ridge. All things considered, Still one of the more amazing treks I've done and overall the most beautiful. I got lost in the Smoky Mountains. We were looking to reach an opening in the trees to look out into the mountains. The trail we took branched into multiple trails and being the dumb teenagers we are we got lost. We ended up on the other side of the mountain range we were hiking. As we were walking we notice a road and on the other side of the road was the biggest black bear I've ever seen just looking back at us. My friends take off and then I see the bear start running towards and I bolt off. We outrun the bear and continue walking down this mountain. We got to a road with a few houses and had to walk 16 miles to the nearer city through deep hillbilly country. I kid you not there was a 50 yard line of just Bud Light cans on the side of the road. A few years ago, me and my friends went on a trip to this secluded cabin in the mountains. We were there for the entire weekend, and had a blast. However round midnight on Friday, we heard blood curdling screams and a loud crashing noise coming from outside. We thought nothing of it at first, but the screams continued. So we decided to investigate. What we found was something that no rational mind could ever have imagined in a billion years. We found ourselves staring at a bizarre creature which we can only describe as a cross between a goblin, a demon and something completely unnatural. It had no eyes, only hollow black sockets which gave it a completely hollow stare. The thing was covered in a thin sheen of drippy blood which glistened in the moonlight. It was busy hacking apart the lower half of a girl whose upper body was completely naked. It had hacked her in half diagonally, from the waist, and was halfway through hacking off her legs. It seemed to notice us, and let out a bestial roar. My best friend screamed and fainted, my other friend ran and hid, I froze in fear. We've never told anyone about this, not our parents, not our friends, nobody. Even now, after years, I get nervous whenever I have an encounter with the woods after that night. We got out of there as soon as we could. No way were we going to stick around for nature's oddest work of art. The murderer was long gone, thank God.
I walked along a trail with my friends to get away from a crowded party we were from. While walking for around 20 minutes, I kid you not, a pentagram was spray painted onto a tree, with a group of sticks in a formation you would see out of the Blair Witch Project. It wasn't even that far from the trail itself. I happened to see the red star on the tree. I saw another one that looked just like it a few meters away, but I didn't want to go because it was muddy and there were chances of getting poison ivy. Later while walking, we did see what seemed to be a shelter made out of sticks and leaves. We didn't want to get near it though. There was nothing else after that, but we were a bit spooked from it. We did joke that our souls were bound to that forest now though. I did think that it was either a joke, or probably some satanic ritual. Edit. I saw another story that was similar to this one. Sorry if the person that wrote that is seeing this. I walked along a trail with my friends to get away from a crowded party we were from. While walking for around 20 minutes, I kid you not, a pentagram was spray painted onto a tree, with a group of sticks in a formation you would see out of the Blair Witch Project. It wasn't even that far from the trail itself. I happened to see the red star on the tree. I saw another one that looked just like it a few meters away, but I didn't want to go because it was muddy and there were chances of getting poison ivy. Later while walking, we did see what seemed to be a shelter made out of sticks and leaves. We didn't want to get near it though. There was nothing else after that, but we were a bit spooked from it. We did joke that our souls were bound to that forest now though. I did think that it was either a joke, or probably some satanic ritual. Edit. I saw another story that was similar to this one. Sorry if the person that wrote that is seeing this. Friend story, not mine. My buddy and his younger brother in remote Oregon backpacking with another of their friends around 20 years ago. Younger brother spikes a sudden fever and feels like hell. It's daytime but they pitch a tent and he crawls in his bag in the tent to try to sleep it off for a bit. The other two get cold just sitting around so they start a small fire to warm up. Sick guy Dave is asleep with his head out the tent flap when they hear a crack and a small branch falls near the tent. They look up and a fatso black bear is climbing down the tree, the base of the tree only a few feet from Dave's head. One guy makes a fuss to keep the bear up the tree, the other gets Dave up and moving and the three of them haul us down the trail, wait a half hour, return to find the bear gone and collect their tent. Not really a hiker but I hunt a lot and walk through the woods so I guess that can count but anyway, I was hunting one day early in the morning and I was about halfway through my hunt when everything went quiet, and I don't mean peaceful quiet where you can hear the birds and the wind I mean nothing. I couldn't hear the birds, I couldn't hear wind I heard nothing, and then I heard like a ship horn sound if you know what I mean, after I heard that I booked it back to the entrance to the place. I was camping at the Lake of the Horns in Alberta. It's about a 12 kilometers hike and 700 meters elevation gain to the lake, most of the elevation in the last 500 meters when you hit the head wall. We knew ahead of time that you weren't supposed to camp at the lake as there isn't any flat ground or tree cover, instead you camp down below the head wall. However for multiple reasons we decided to camp at the lake where we found a somewhat flat small square of land we could pitch a tent although it was like 5 meters away from the lake with no tree or even bush cover at all. We did this for a few reasons because we wanted to avoid mosquitoes which had eaten us alive the night before since we had lost our bug spray. One of my friends was new to hiking and didn't have the energy to hike back down. And it was also just an amazing view. Fast forward a couple hours and the strongest winds I have ever felt in my life started pounding us. Our tent, which was pegged in and had our bags inside, got lifted off the ground and almost flew into the lake. 
We managed to grab it just in time. I was holding on to the tent as everyone else was grabbing everything we had and we were going to sit in the tent until the winds died down. During this time we were getting absolutely soaked. A bit because of some rain, but mostly because of the wind lifting up spray from the lake. Then this one gust came and hit me so hard I felt like I might get lifted off the ground and it pushed me forward to fall on the tent which ripped the fly. Once this initial rip happened the wind tore it open and off the tent. At this point we had to decide to take the tent down and pack everything in our bags otherwise everything would get soaked without the fly. I should mention that during all of this I was tripping on shrooms. Thankfully it wasn't turning into a bad trip I was actually laughing my ass off and felt the deepest sense of adventure I have ever felt in my life. Though I was quite scared we would have to spend the night sitting on the ground getting cold and wet and no sleep, followed by an absolutely miserable hike out the next day. At this point we could have tried to hike down the headwall to the main campsite but it was getting dark, windy, wet, and two of us were tripping. I'm glad we decided not to do this as one of us could have easily fallen off the cliff and died in these conditions. It's sketchy enough hiking down in perfect conditions. Instead we sat beside some bushes on the opposite side of the lake and prayed that the wind would die down. After an hour things had eerily calmed down and we decided to set the tent up again hoping that the fly would still be usable. We did everything we could to secure the fly to the tent and it seemed like it might hold. But if another gust of wind came in the night it could rip the fly off again and if it rained again this would suck. Thankfully despite some more wind in the night, during which I was laying awake praying that the fly held, the fly did indeed hold and we made it though the night dry and with at least a few hours of sleep. Dead of night, woke up to the sounds of shoveling. There is no mistaking the sound of a shovel blade cutting through gravel. This was during a short road trip on the Olympic Peninsula, WA. My partner and I found a free designated camping area, near an OHV public use area. It was already getting dark as we turn off the highway, go down a short dirt road, turn right and it opened into a roughly circular clearing 200 feet across. Five small campsites, each with a fire ring and picnic table, side by side up against the back of the clearing with small strips of recently planted, e. short, vegetation separating the sites. The leftmost site, number one, was occupied by one of those 10 apostrophe x 10 x easy ups with the walls all zipped up and no car around. We took second from the end, number four. Planning a big hike in the morning we set up our tent, didn't bother with stakes, just hop in and called it an early night. 2 a.m. rolls around, and I wake up to what is unmistakably the sound of shoveling. I listen for a little while. It's coming from site number one. I can see the glow of a lantern through the tent wall, and hear the beat of some EDM. I wake up my partner who usually sleeps with earplugs and she immediately can see something is wrong by the look on my face. She sits up and we start whispering I don't know, I just woke up. We should go. At that point the shoveling stops. We hear footsteps on gravel, and the EDM gets cranked right to 11. What the F? We've both squirmed out of our sleeping bags at this point not wanting to make zipper sounds and are sitting upright making a plan. You take the car keys, hop in, start the engine, pop the trunk. Don't forget to unlock the passenger door. I'll collapse the tent and stuff everything in, and then we get the F out of here. Then the sex started. Heavy breathing, moans, grunts, all of it coming from site number one. What? The F. All right, let's go. Zip. We open the tent and jump out. She hops in and starts the car and I can hear the trunk pop. Two poles at the foot of the tent, two poles at the head, I pop them all out and start wadding up balls of fabric, shortening tent poles in the process. I look up and over to site number one. Instead of a lantern, 
a construction utility light was set up on the ground pointing upward. The easy up walls were unzipped, a pickup had backed into the site and I could see the handle of a shovel coming out of a small hole in the ground. And in front of all of this, a man and a woman naked, straddling the picnic table. They actually seemed surprised to see us and both turned away, which at the time immediately made me feel better. At least they had the presence of mind to be embarrassed. I didn't stop to say anything, crammed the tent mass into the trunk, jumped in the car and we just drove. What the F? Edit. Woke up to the sounds of shoveling gravel and EDM. Followed quickly by sexy time sounds. We jumped in the car and drove away. What the hell? Scary then strange. Still not sure if we were the strange ones. A few years ago was camping with my boyfriend, our kid, and another couple in theirs. Our friends were a little more advanced hikers so we were in a deeper spot than I might have chosen, but we knew enough to hang our food slash trash due to black bears and the usual pests. We don't have much else to worry about around here. In the middle of the night, our sleeping three yo between us, my BF and I wake up to sounds outside. Animal sounds, we guessed, BC it didn't sound human. But like I said, I know what we're signing up for around here, and I've never had cause to be viscerally frightened of an animal attack. But these sounds on the ground, shuffling around our tent, were like nothing I'd ever heard. The hairs on my neck shot up. It was too dark to discern any kind of shadow and I definitely wasn't going to turn on our light. Maybe I was being overprotective BC of my kid, but I know what raccoons slash possum slash deer sound like, and this wasn't any of those. It was also too calculated to be a bear. The only sense I could make of it was that it was terrifying, and we felt like prey. Maybe a bobcat, but it sounded heavier. After waiting with bated breath for the footsteps to go away, my son woke up and cried through the morning, which was very unusual for him in nature. Whatever psychic energy scared us so deeply scared him too. I was hiking in Vermont, deep in the woods and was taking photos of a gorgeous stream that I had come across. I walked along the stream bank to get a better picture of a small waterfall and there were some tall, dense bushes. All off a sudden, there is a loud snorting slash grunting noise and a female moose with a calf pops out of the brush about three feet from me and is coming towards me, grunting and snorting. I knew I could not outrun the moose so started to back up and got behind a tree and slowly made my way back up a hill all the while watching the moose which stood there continuing to stare me down. I absolutely never want to be that close to a moose ever again, especially one that has a young one with her. This might not be the creepiest, but the most recent. I went to check out and photograph this ghost town in Nevada that I'd been wanting to visit for years. It's only about 20 minutes from the nearest town. But once you're out there it really feels like the middle of nowhere. The ruins felt post-apocalyptic, and I just got a bad feeling. It was a very unusual feeling for me and not one I'm familiar with. I was even thinking this is one of those bad feelings I'm always reading about on creepy reddit threads. I drove a long way to get there, but as soon as I got out of the car I felt panicky and wanted to leave immediately. I decided to walk around just a little bit and snap a bunch of pictures as quickly as possible, when I found a staff that must have belonged to a warlock. It was a pole wrapped in barbed wire and topped by a horse's skull, spray painted blue. I'm guessing slash hoping it was a prop for an edgy photo shoot? Nothing bad happened to me, but I didn't even like the pictures I took and on the way back was scolding myself for not listening the bad feeling and leaving sooner. Because the lesson from these threads is always listen to that bad feeling. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. 
We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.